What is up? Welcome everyone to Modern Day Debate. We are a neutral, non-partisan platform welcoming everyone from all walks of life. If you're looking for even more fantastic debates, we are all over the internet, including your favorite podcasting platform. So if you enjoy debates, please don't forget to like, follow on Twitch, and subscribe on YouTube, including tonight's debate on Is NASA Trustworthy? With our debaters, Mark Reed and Nathan Thompson, here to help us find out. And if you enjoy what either of them have to say tonight, our guest links are in the description below. And throughout the debate, you can also tag me in chat at Amy Newman with your questions or comment for our Q&A section. Those super chats will get you sent to the top of the list. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Mark for their up to 10 minute opening statement. The floor is all yours. Oh, thank you, Amy. I thought it was 10 to 12, though, because I've got sort of a slideshow that's based upon those that times. That sounds um, fantastic. 10 to 12 minutes, as long as you can get your intro out. Those oh, Super Chats will okay. get you sent to the top I will of the just list. share my screen. Thank you. Just tell me when you've got it up you, and running. You are good. Oh, thank you. Um. And thank you for having me here, Amy. I want to thank Modern Day Debate. Thank you for Nathan for showing up to debate me. And um, thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time. Um, today we're debating how can we trust NASA. And um, I want to go through the like qu really quickly the history of NASA and how we sort of got to have this um, space agency. Um, firstly, it's sort of one thing occurred to me this morning. It's sort of what we trust, like talking about trusting them with. You know, are we talking about trusting them with um, minding your children or, 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 or providing for your family, which isn't really the question. The whole point is, I, I think, of this debate is can we trust them to um, present to us um, a, a technologically and, and logically uh, uh, feasible worldview that, that uh, they are currently investigating? So can we trust them scientifically, essentially, is the question. Um, so that NASA, NASA was originally NACA, um, and that's the uh, North American... Uh, 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 sorry, National American Committee for Aeronautics. Um, so um, it, it didn't start as a space agency, of course. It actually started uh, early in the 20th century as a aeronautics division before space travel was even a thing. Um, for comparison, Lady Elizabeth Blount established the uh, Universal Zetetic Society in, in 1893, which uh, Samuel Shelton set up as the International Flat Earth Research Society, uh, or better known as the Flat Earth Society from Dover, England. And um, that was in 1893. So in essence, Flat Earth has been around longer than um, NASA, um, which, which is important kind of thing. Um, and, and it's interesting to note that the Americans sort of lagged behind the Europeans as far as automation and um, aeronautics was concerned. Um, after, after completing a doctorate in physics in uh, 1911, Goddard joined the facility of, of NACA. Um, dur during his physics lectures, he outlined ways of reaching the moon. Um, Goddard was basing his pro projections on the real, very real advances in metallurgy, thermodynamics, navigational theory, control techniques. Um, the technology that they had had begun to make rocketry prop possible, and Goddard fabricated a series of rocket tests. In 1920, he wrote a, a monograph, a method of attaining extreme altitudes, and it was published by the Smithsonian. Um, he continued his experiments with liquid propellant rockets, um, igniting them on the field, scared a ton of livestock on his neighbor's property. Eventually, uh, that's 1926, he did um, one the most uh, the first successful flight of a liquid propellant rocket, a flight of 2.5 seconds, carried an uh, altitude of 41 feet, which is not a lot, not, not huge, but it was a start for the uh, um, American rocketry industry. Um, so during uh, uh, 1941, um, the Hap Arnold, the chief of the US Army Air Forces, um, he was dumbfounded by a British turbojet plane. 
um, the Gloucester E2839. Um, it's already entered its final test phase and it was basically making its first flight the following month. Um, fearing a German invasion, the British were willing to share the turbojet technology with America as information on advanced aerodynamics began to trickle out to feed Germany. The American engineers were impressed with the German engineering. Um, sort of things like the ME136 powered interceptor and the Junkers 238 jet bomber. Um, it basically had critics in America asking why American designs were lagging so far behind the rest of Europe. And America had been demonstrably lagging in jets and swim, swim wing aircraft. Um, so really I'm mentioning this because uh, at the end of the war, uh, uh, opportunity came for the US to sweep up a large amount of German engineers and technicians in Operation Paperclip. Um, paradoxically, German success in World War wartime V2 programs became a crucial legacy for uh, post-war American space efforts. Um, this, during this time, about 1957, um, America was trying to launch its own uh, rocket to take a satellite. Unfortunately, they were beaten by Russia with Sputnik 1. Um, now, the launch that America was going to do, the uh, satellite weighed about two pounds. Um, Sputnik 1 weighed 183 pounds. Now, if you think about that in terms of warfare, if somebody can launch something weighing 181 pounds heavier than what you have, the destructive capability on that payload significantly outweighs the other. It was ominous. It was uh, critical that America catch up in terms of rocketry. Absolutely critical. Um, so the, the one that they, they tried to launch was the Vanguard. Um, 1957, the, uh, December 6, Vanguard rose about three feet from the Lort platform, shuddered and then collapsed in flames. It was an absolute abject failure. Uh, sorry, it was a three pound payload. Um, when when um, an American satellite went to orbit, it was a payload of two pounds against uh, Sputnik 2, which was 1,100 pounds of payload. Um, this was a cast catastrophic outpowering of the US. Now, um, from, from this, America decided it needed to um, assimilate um, all of its aeronautics and, and rocketry into one department. And um, this came about in October 1st, 1958, when NASA was born. Um, this is the National Mission Statement. Um, basically, they, they have core values, integrity, teamwork, excellence, and inclusion. Um, and that inclusion being very, very significant. Um, NASA employs about 8,000 permanent workers across fields of space, engineering, management, support staff. They also employ contractors, which can be between 1,000 and 18,000, depending on the project. The budget of NASA is relatively small. It accounts for only roughly half a percent of the federal budget or half a penny out of everybody's pocket. Um, and famously, they did a sort of a push to increase spending sort of a penny for NASA. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is sort of some of the inventions that have come from NASA. Um, these are health and medicine, things like uh, LASIK surgery, cochlear implants, and visible braces. Um, this is uh, things like artificial limbs, scratch-resistant lenses. So if you do have glasses with scratch-resistant lenses, the space blanket, which is found in that silver blanket found in most first aid kits. Um, the uh, cutting of grooves in highways was first developed by uh, NASA to help uh, stop the, uh, or give more grip to the, the landing of aeronautic uh, um, um, planes and, and shuttles. Um, yeah, I mean, um, we can go through it. Uh, fire resistance, uh, firefighting equipment, because they were working with oxygen and um, trying to keep temperatures stable of, of uh, humans. Um, they, they did things like video enhancement. Um, temper foam was created by NASA. That's also memory foam you might know it as. Um, the CMOS image sensor, which is interesting because all of your cell phone um, cameras, DSLR cameras, GoPros, they use that sensor. So if you're using a cell phone, part of that was in innovated by NASA, um, which is interesting. Um, air scrubbers, um, things like that for uh, atmosphere regulation, they invented. Um, We've got things like water purification. They did things like converting uh, uh, um, pollution, so cleansing water, converting GPS error signals. Um, we use it for agriculture because self-driving um, agricultural products do use it. 
um, computer technology. Um, and one of the ones I want to mention that is OpenStack because that is actually used by a lot of companies for cloud technology. So if you are connecting to the internet and going on cloud functions, OpenStack is probably involved somewhere. So a lot of this technology, um, they've just given away for free. They've just basically said, hey, this is for the good of humanity. You can use it. They don't actually, unless another company is involved, like they do partner with other companies, they generally will just make it available. And, and in 2014, they released over a thousand pieces of software for people just to use. Um, Things like uh, food safety monitoring, um, improved mine safety because they're working with basically these bolts with sensed load pressure and um, um, fasteners that could detect when the load was becoming too much. We still use them in mining today. Um, this is the technology that Flat Earth has produced. And don't forget, they started before NASA started. Um, they have produced nothing um, that I can tell. Maybe Nathan can show us some products that they've come up with here. Um, so these are real scientists. They're doing research on the effects of DNA proteins when subjected to vacuum, low temperature and focused light. Um, this is what real scientists are doing. These are not real scientists who do no research. They have no idea how to design, build, or implement any aeronautical or space technology. And even if they spent the rest of their life studying, could not even begin to implement the experiments we see in the last picture. No flat earther has ever implemented or is capable of implementing any kind of aeronautic program, except one. Um, and this was Mad Mike Hughes. He was trying to reach an altitude of 5,000 feet uh, with you know, riding a steam-powered rocket he made at home. He was really regrettably and unfortunately killed when his parachute deployed early. And I want to say I do admire his bravery and commitment to finding the truth, although I do have to confirm the silly conspiracy theories and Dunning-Kruger effect that led him to think he could design a safe rocket. And, um, you know, it's, it's a really tragic episode what happened with this guy. Um, so with summation, why trust NASA? Uh, it's because they have a 100-year history of aeronautics, which they've been upfront and honest with their failures as well as their successes. They're accountable to the government and through freedom of information, accountable to people because they still, you can still request freedom of information from, from NASA. The main question I want you to consider is if you do not trust NASA for aeronautic and rocket technology, science and innovation, then who should we trust? Who, who should be doing it? What's the alternative? Is the Flat Earth Society going to take it over? Ordinary people off the street? Religions? Priests? Are they going to take over aeronautics? Is my opponent going to take over aeronautics? Is he going to design the planes of the future? Um, I'd like you to think about that just as uh, Nathan does his side. But thank you very much for your time, and I will turn it back to the moderator. Thank you, Amy. Thank you so very much, Mark, for your opening statement. And with that, Nathan, the floor is yours for your up to 10 to 12 minute opening statement. Oh, I uh, just have to unmute yourself. Or I'll try yeah, you if I Nathan. can. Yep. You Got can. you. Sorry. Oh, no, you're good my first time doing one of these but the floor is yours up to 10 to 12 minutes all right ladies and gentlemen my name is nathan thompson used to run the flat official flat earth and globe discussion we had if you believe the numbers facebook tells us 155,000 members and that was deleted shortly after my youtube was deleted uh shortly after that my instagram the globe is flat was deleted i've been banned from skype venmo my yahoo account was deleted I was blocked from Tinder. Why? Why am I getting censored off all these platforms when I talk about three things? How if we can consume food without harming animals, we should do that. You should research the Bible because there's a lot more truth in there than we've been led to believe. And you should test Earth yourself because what we're being told from the mainstream is objectively and verifiably not true. So that being said, I'm gonna share my screen. I don't know if Mark knew this, the topic of the debate was, can we trust NASA? Not their history, not their mission statement, not what they've done in health and medicine or public safety. The fact that they've made air scrubbers and fire blankets means nothing in this debate. So let's get started. I'm gonna share screen, Amy, and we'll just go my entire desktop. 
And we'll start with uh, NASA's bread and butter, telling you you live on a globe. What about all these photos of Earth? Okay, they, do they have photos of a globe? I mean, that would surely be a reason to have a space station and, uh, and go into space is so that we could see not only what we're on, but what's around us, maybe some incoming threats. But the problem is, these are Photoshop. Admittedly, Photoshop. NASA admits this. So don't get your feelings hurt. I'm not trying to hurt NASA's feelings here. They admit these are Photoshop. So there's copy and pasted clouds. Anyone can see that. That should not be happening on a photo of Earth. Okay. Robert Simmons. Oh, I'm going to go back. Admits they are Photoshop because they have to be. He says, I start with a blank circle. They give me scans of the Earth. And I turn the scans of Earth into a ball. Excellent. Blue marble images of Earth. They're never the same color. Their countries are constantly changing sides. And if you have a globe with half of it being North America and a small portion of South America, that means on the other side of the globe, you would have to have all of the other oceans, Australia, Africa, all of Asia would be on the other side. All of Europe would be on the other side. I mean, the fact that people in 2022, almost 2023, believe this is, is depressing, actually, to be honest. I can't believe people still buy into this nonsense. But uh, what about all the photos of Earth from the moon? This is an official NASA photograph, and it's officially fake. It's copy and pasted. You just have to turn the layers on, and you can clearly see that. It is fake. Where are all the stars in NASA photos? Oh my gosh, I have so much to go over here. Uh, there's no stars here. Well, that's interesting because big complex lies are hard to keep straight when they are compartmentalized, like NASA's lies. Oh, that's one I want to play. If all the astronauts said you can't see, and this, I can't read it because the yeah, you can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You right. can see moons. You, you see the ga the gas uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky yeah, Way galaxy. The Atlantic. Whilst from in Mark space, Cameron. This is from Mark Cameron. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, because yeah, you can see, yeah, because yeah. you can see the stars. Oh yeah. And, you know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time. Look how Don Pettit is looking at the other astronaut because he doesn't know what to say. And then as soon as he says something, Mike, he goes, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." Well, apparently these guys think it's a stars. memo. Okay. Who remembers these guys? You guys remember these guys? We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon. The sky is uh, a deep black uh, when viewed from the moon as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the Earth and the moon. And we cannot see stars. And it's, it's not the a black cool void. Thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the, there's all the stars there. And the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. And when you're, when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit, uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight, so you can't see any stars just like here on Earth. There's all the, there's all the stars there. And the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Someone didn't get the no stars memo, guys. Yeah, you can't end. There's more than stars. You can see planets. Planets. Right. You see moons. You, you see the, ga the gas uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky yeah, Way galaxy. The Atlantic. Who actually thinks these guys are smart? I mean, listen to them talk. Wow. Interesting. All right. So here's another one. Could astronauts even survive in the infinite vacuum of space? Let's go ahead and play this one for you, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to like this. Go ahead, turn the volume up. The clip will demonstrate what would happen to these astronauts. You can see a little bit of bubbles start going. And 
Whoa, it stopped boiling. How cool is that? But the ultimate and most dangerous test was a huge, specially constructed vacuum chamber. They were able to pull all the air out, create a big vacuum. That way we could test our suits to make sure there was no leakage. One such test narrowly avoided disaster. Jim LeBlanc was the test subject in the vacuum chamber. What the heck happened there? They didn't even show him passing out. Hold on one sec. Technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. The clip will demonstrate what would happen to these astronauts. I got to be able to scroll forward on this somehow. Sorry, I did no preparation for this debate because I'm right. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how good you are in the debate. You just got to be right. So what happens is they put him in a vacuum chamber and he says the saliva in my mouth started to bubble and then he passed out. So they stopped training astronauts in vacuum chambers and they put him in pools. So not representing a zero pressure environment, in, they put him into a pressurized environment. Brilliant. Now, this video is too long. It's got about five minutes of NASA bloopers, wires, green screen, augmented reality failures, people ghosting out of screen. Um, I'll play a brief portion of it, but I'm going to skip through a lot of it. So this guy's ghosting out of screen. Uh, I mean, th this doesn't happen unless you're faking the video. There's no way for someone to just vanish into thin air. Come on, guys. And then also, you got uh, this guy. You can see his wires. He's hanging from a harness here. Look at this CGI glitch. There, what? what? What is that? Now we got bubbles in space, ladies and gentlemen. Bubbles. Bubbles that change directions, accelerate, decelerate, curve. This should not happen going 17,000 miles an hour. Okay. So lots of problems here. Okay. I know that Mark is clinging to the fact that they made air scrubbers and fire blankies, but they're faking space with the $60 million they get a day. Mark's like, well, why doesn't flat earth come up with air scrubbers and fire blankets? Nobody gives me $60 million a day to make things, okay? So if they did, I'll start making stuff. Let me know, guys. I'll give you my routing number, bank account, $60 million a day. I will have the best air scrubber you've ever seen and fire blanking coming soon to a Walmart near you. All right, and that's another thing too is they take our tax money and then they patent all this stuff and then they make tons of money in the private sector off of stuff that was funded by taxpayer money. So who remembers this guy? Don Pettit couldn't remember that we should not see stars in space. Read between the lines. Take a listen. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology. And uh, it's a paper. They destroyed the technology? What, was it just like a Friday and they just got done watching Office Space and they wanted to take all the technology for the moon landing out to a field and just beat it up with a bat while listening to some gangster music. What, we give these people $60 million a day and they destroy technology and you think they should be trusted? Are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me, guys. Oh, but don't worry. It's not all lies. There's documents that'll tell you you live on a flat, non-rotating earth. Not just in NASA multiple times, but you've got Oh, there's NASA again. You got the military. You've got, well, there's NASA again telling you the Earth's flat and non-rotating. You've got MIT. You've got all these documents. The Army, beacon position and attitude navigation aiding by, aided by a magnetometer. Here's another one. Army Research Laboratory. Propagation of electromagnetic fields over flat Earth. The whole premise for the space agency is to lie to you. The word NASA in Hebrew means to deceive. It's the word when Satan beguiled Eve, 
He nasted her. He tricked her. He deceived her. So the company name in Hebrew means to trick or deceive. And here we are having a debate. Should they be trusted? Wow. All right. 60 seconds. It gets better. Could it be why all these organizations use flat earth maps in their logos? International Aviation Organization, United Nations, International Maritime Organizations. Also, uh, from 1982 to 2014, these are balloon launches from the Estranged Space Center. Eight of these are at the MER. I mean, what about all the rockets that are launched? Well, there's a rocket graveyard. Pitch it, explain that we found hundreds and hundreds of U.S. Air Force rockets that they were testing off the coast of Florida. So let's give them more money. They're going to send hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those rockets into space, but they all end up in the bottom of the ocean because they found them there. Not only that, not only NASA doing the fake free guys, SpaceX, look at this, 408 kilometers away, you have a very gradual curve. Half the distance, 177 kilometers away, you've got a very dramatic curvature of Earth. So uh, why? Why would the governments lie to us? Ladies and gentlemen, this has been going on before I was born. Unfortunately, I'm not Miss Cleo. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't divine their thoughts. But one good reason to lie to you is money. They get $53 million a day in 2019. They have stolen over a half a trillion dollars from you. And this guy's over here saying we should trust them because they gave us fire blankets and air scrubbers and pain. Hang. Have you ever got scratch resistant glasses? Oh, well, let's give them another half trillion dollars to fake space because they made scratch resistant glasses. Who founded NASA? Well, all these people were Crowley's disciple, Jack Parsons, That's Elmer time, I Hubbard, mean. Warner Von Braun, Walt Disney, 33rd degree Mason. Look at these. A Buzz Aldrin, Mason, James Irwin. I start. am going to need you to at least wrap up your final point. I got two more slides, Amy, and I didn't even touch this entire presentation. So um, NASA and Freemasonry are very closely knit. All the founders of NASA worship this guy Crowley who said, yes, Lucifer is God. He called himself the beast. He was said to be the most evil person on earth. So the Freemason and NASA fraud is the cornerstone of one yeah, of the- Yeah, I think that's time. I mean, it's kind of unfair if he goes way over the time that I got a lot of- Way stuff. over? I had two more yeah. slides. I had a good 30 more seconds, dude. You were right, supposed to wrap up, mate. Right. Right. Not going. On that. Just wrap up. I am sending love to both of our interlocutors, and we are going to head into the open dialogue portion of the debate. I want to please, if you're enjoying- what either of our interlocutors have to say. Their links are in the description below. And if you're enjoying the debate, please don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. But I am going to hand it right back over to you two gentlemen for your up to 50 minutes of open dialogue. The floor is both of yours. Thank you very much, Amy. Yeah, so sort of Nathan went on about a whole load of things that were sort of just his misinterpretation of the data, just these paranoid conspiracy theories that, you know, go on to the Bible and stuff. He's talking about NASA, meaning this Hebrew word, and it also sounds like Nasha. So maybe NASA has teeth somewhere because of gnashing of teeth. It is the most ridiculous kind of connection to unassociated things I've ever heard. I never said any but of things that. Like the, um, Are you just going to monologue? During the back and forth portion? Well, I'm, I was going to bring up a couple of points, Nathan, and then you can address Well, let's them. go over them you know, one by let's one. Let's do that. Because you went over let's a lot and even went over over one. time. So if you What's could just let me put up a couple of... Okay, the first point is, why does the etymology of a word have any significance on what they actually do? Because I could associate all kinds of words with all kinds of things and say, hey, this word sounds like this. It's not the same, but it sounds like it. That means absolutely nothing. Paranoia. Are you done? Yeah. Excellent. That's I'm going to respond point, yeah. now. So I'd appreciate if you give me the same consideration I just gave you and not interrupt me. Okay. I, my well, whole you did purpose, interrupt me. Because okay. you were rambling on and on and monologuing. And I said, let's go over. I've so, gone like one less one. than a minute. So, Nathan, I've gone less than a minute. Um, you know, you've, you've got a weird sense of, you know, time when you go way over time and then accuse me of rambling on and on and on. I'm going to interrupt go both of you. And what we're going to do... Sure is up to two to three minutes. You don't have to take two to three minutes, but up to two, three to minutes, whenever it is your turn, uh, someone starts yeah, speaking and it will be your turn and the clock will go. Sure, thank you. 
Great. So my entire premise for my argument was not NASA means to deceive, so they are lying to us. I find it interesting that the word NASA in Hebrew means to deceive. That's why I brought it up. But you fail to realize that it was not all just conspiracy delusion on my part. I showed videos from NASA of them trying to put a spacesuit in a vacuum. The dude almost died. His sweat and saliva started to bubble and he passed out. Now they no longer train in vacuums which is the atmosphere that they allegedly work in. They train in pools, which simulate zero gravity and look perfect when faking space for a camera, okay? So that's not paranoid delusions. That's their words saying we no longer test in a vacuum, we test in pools. And it's an exact replica of the ISS. So if they were training and doing the actual videos of the ISS in the pool, you wouldn't know the difference. That's why there are bubbles in space is because when they're faking spacewalks, they are actually underwater in a pool because space is fake. It violates the second law of thermodynamics. You cannot demonstrate. Are you going to keep going on and on? She yes. gave me two minutes, well, you that is, that is, and I will say, I will... Uh, when Can we hits, stick to one point? Since Nathan wants to do gave one me point two, at a time. Now, I thought you said you were fine with two minutes. Now you want to go back to what I said, which is point for at, point? At Are you joking? At the two-minute mark, I will say, please wrap it up for your final points. That'll go okay. into... The then continue, break. Nathan. Then continue. Good, I'll Instead give you of sort of having oh, a tantrum. Thanks just so much. Say. I appreciate you allowing me to You're continue. You're welcome. You're so welcome. welcome. I am sending You're love welcome. to both interlocutors. Nathan, I'll give you an extra 30 seconds. The floor is back to you. I don't need an extra 30 seconds. Uh, I made my point. This guy's just interrupting me just because he's tired of getting oh, annihilated. So you're complaining over nothing. Good. Okay, gotcha. Floor is over to you, Mark. You got You're the one with okay, so gotcha. Hi, baby. Oh, this is my time. This is my time. This is my time. Thanks, Nathan. Cheers. Um, so basically, Nathan didn't even address my why that means to deceive actually has any impact on it. So we just completely ignored that and went on to something else. I don't know why, but hey, he just basically won't address the point. Sure. Um, videos for the vacuum chamber. Yeah, they started testing suits in a vacuum chamber. And even his video said they're testing suits to make sure there are no imperfections or holes in the suits or things that could compromise it. When they had a, a case of this suit having a flaw and in the vacuum, bad things were happening as it showed, because what Nathan showed with this weird thing of water and it bubbling in a vacuum, the whole idea is the people in space aren't in a vacuum. They're in a suit, which it has an atmosphere in the suit. So what's really ridiculous is Nathan doesn't even understand how a vacuum and, and a space suit actually works. And if there is a flaw in the suit, yes, the water will boil because then the, the person, like the cup of water, is subjected to the vacuum, which we're trying to prevent that happening. Now, once they realized, hey, there's a better way to test for flaws, how do we do it? We put them in water and see if any water's coming in, because what they're trying to do is make the suit airtight, completely airtight. So if they find a better way of doing things, of course, they're going to change over. And water is not perfect for um, demonstrating, uh, you know, faking space. It isn't perfect. There's a number of things that, that water does that space doesn't do, that zero gravity doesn't do, rather, because they're not in space. They're inside of a um, atmosphere that that is inside space, which you know, it's amazing that Nathan fails to realise that. And it goes on for the second law of thought of thermodynamics, which is basically so silly because these these people they're not directly exposed to space and that's the entire point that he seems to have missed um he's talking about an exact replica no it's, it's just iss you can see it with a telescope like seriously uh, the fact that nathan won't use a telescope is kind of indicative of his paranoid conspiracy theory but you know that's entirely his 60 lookout. seconds um, and also the whole idea that there's bubbles in space, what they are, it's, it's actually ice coming off because, you know, it's insanely cold. So Nathan looks at this and he thinks, oh, it must be air bubbles because of his innate paranoia and conspiracy theory to think that all of this is being faked. That's what he's looking for. This has been shown time and time and time again, but Nathan just doesn't want to hear the truth. What he wants to do is sort of make up these ridiculous statements like, hey, the water boils because it's exposed to a vacuum, then wonders why humans don't boil in space when they have a spacesuit that prevents them to be exposed to a vacuum. And the person in the vacuum chamber when there was a flaw, they did have the same results. So in fact, Nathan's 
entire video debunks itself. Uh, great. You said uh, the suit is on in the vacuum, so they don't have to worry about their blood boiling or their saliva boiling. They tested the spacesuit in a vacuum. Okay, so they had the dude with the spacesuit on his body in a vacuum and it didn't work. And your argument is, oh, well, that's why they built an entire perfect replica of the ISS underwater is so that they could test the spacesuit. Then you went on to say how water is totally different than space. Yeah, you're right. We shouldn't be testing anything in water. If you're going to space, Mark, wow. Okay, so not directly exposed to space, the, the suit. They put him in a vacuum, okay? You can't make that argument, Mark. It has, you have no foundation to stand on to say, oh, that they're, they're wearing the suits in space so, so they're protected from the vacuum. They tried to test the space suit in a vacuum and it didn't work. They don't do it anymore. That's how bad it is. That's why Mark Sargent put out a challenge. Put me in a spacesuit, put an astronaut in a spacesuit, send us into the Sandusky Research Center, close the doors, and turn on the vacuum. They won't do it because people will die and will be, make national news that they've been faking space and they've stolen a half a trillion dollars. And Mark's happy with it because he got a fire blankie and an air scrubber. Wow. Okay. Wow. And the ice cannot be ice falling off the ISS because those space bubbles accelerate, decelerate, change direction, and curve. Now, you can't do that. It appears like they're in like a fluid-like medium. That doesn't happen in a vacuum of space going 17,000 miles an hour. You don't get ice flicking off and it changing direction, accelerating, decelerating, curving. That doesn't happen, Mark. Sorry, it's actually happening because they're faking it in a pool. I'm sorry, you haven't, haven't figured that out yet. Also, this two-minute thing is BS. It's not a back and forth at all. It's just he well, monologues for two minutes, and you, then I address the silliness that he's basically if just... If you would like, uh, I can shorten it to two minutes. We can see if we can get it back and forth. I just want everyone to be able to actually get their points over it without... So uh, we'll shorten it to uh, at a, a minute and a half. Cool. I'll give you 30 yeah. seconds. Heads I think up. the problem is, Amy, that sort of I brought up a couple of points and sort of Nathan jumped in and interrupted me. And I'm happy for him to bring up a few points, but he doesn't seem to want me to do the same while he wants to go on about random stuff. So if Nathan can let me say what I need to say well, and then, you know, we can go back to him, that's fine with me. I will, uh, if you'd like to continue... Uh, going back and forth. If it gets heated again, I'll try. Sure. I like the spice. I want the spice. I just want yeah. We can always give it a try. Sure. Out. So we'll give it back over to back and forth, Mark. It sounded like you were about mm -hmm. to speak, so I'll give it back to you. But it is once again both of you, gentlemen. Yeah. So it's interesting to note. Sort of. So he says, "Oh, it's dangerous. People will die if they try this." They do other tests in vacuum on various different things. It's just putting a human is in a uh, vacuum chamber where they're not sure if it will work it is too dangerous they've decided it's too dangerous so it's not like they know people will die that's not true so, and, and Nathan doesn't seem to understand this he's just paranoid and has his conspiracy going on so what they're basically saying to Mark Sargent hey it's too dangerous because if there is a flaw in the suit it could it could do a lot of damage to people even if they have emergency shut off and things like that so um that's basically why they're doing it they do other tests for things in vacuums just not on human beings um and and there's no there's no expert saying all of this oh it's changing direction and thing. this is just a product of sort of you know Nathan's fever dream that he wants to think that hey this can't happen in space it has to be it has to be in water what experience do you have with space that you know that this these movements don't happen Nathan yeah that's fascinating you're on mute mate space is fake Mark have you have any experience with space have you been in space no 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 but you I'm don't so, no. but I know it's a vacuum and vacuums are extremely dangerous and you just admitted they don't put humans in vacuums with spacesuits because it's too dangerous. Well, they let people climb to K2 and Mount Everest, which one out of four people who try die. And you're over here like, oh, they got a perfect space record. They sent 550 people into the vacuum of space, which they don't even train for. And, and it's been fine. Nobody's died. Except the, 
the Challenger incident, which was in Earth's Atmos. So that wasn't even in space. So you're telling yeah. me that it's more dangerous to climb to the top of K2 than it is to go to the vacuum of outer space, Mark? Yeah, so um, vacuums are dangerous, like they certainly are, and they do train people for vacuums. A lot of the training that we see in these videos is training for vacuums because they are in pools and things. And yeah, they let people climb the K2, but what we're talking about here is completely different. You're doing a false analogy because people that climb the K2 do so of their own volition and take on board that risk. What we're talking about here is an employer. So an employer forcing you to climb the K2, I would certainly have a problem with, and I would hope you would as well. That isn't the um, actions of a responsible employer, but NASA is a responsible employer. So they don't subject their employees to that level of risk. Um, they try to test as much as possible beforehand, but they're not going to test equipment on human beings in a dangerous situation. They find other ways to do it. And this is what you don't understand because you don't have any idea what you're talking about. You've basically got this conspiracy fever dream that you're on, that it all has to be bad, and therefore all of these things they have to do are being suspect. What they're doing is trying to prevent damage to their employees and make it as safe as possible. In fact, in my opening, I outlined one of their principal core tenants was safety. So why wouldn't they find a better way to do it? You're telling me it's too dangerous to train in a vacuum the medium that they explore. No, it's, it's too dangerous to test a space suit that may or may not be um, um, in like a safe space suit on human beings in a vacuum, which is what you sort of accused them of doing and then stopped doing it when somebody felt their saliva bubbling, which is an early sign that they're actually being affected by vacuum pressure. So it's like you're basically saying, hey, they did this thing that was really dangerous and then they stopped doing it. Well, yeah, what do you expect an employer to do, Nathan? Oh, okay, so it's really dangerous. Vacuums are really dangerous. They don't train yes. in vacuums. You agree with all that. Excellent. What you want to yeah. present this point? The, they, don't, that. they don't train in vacuums because it's a lot cheaper to train in other mediums. There's a lot easier and cheaper ways to do it. I mean, vacuum chambers are incredibly expensive to run it. And if you want a vacuum chamber, say, the size of an ISS, that's that's an incredible um, that amount of vacuum to create, it's, it's completely unfeasible. So you're basically conflating and going from, hey, they tested this suit to why don't they train in this medium? Yeah, they tested a suit in a vacuum chamber, which is actually pretty small. If you're talking about training 100, like, you know, 100 people in, in, in this, this medium, that's one heck of a vacuum chamber. I don't think a vacuum chamber exists like that on Earth. Okay, uh, Mike and Don Pettit said they could see stars, planets, moons, and Magellanic clouds mm -hmm. from space. Yeah, uh, but so Neil Armstrong said space was completely black, and then I had about four or five other astronauts say the exact same thing. So who's right from NASA? Was Don Pettit right? You can see stars in space, or was Neil Armstrong right? You can't see stars from space. It's black. Okay, so this is a case of you sort of chopping up the video to, to sort of make it seem like you want to. And you can see all the jump cuts and the cuts that are made. This is called quote mining um, is the sort of thing that Nathan's doing here. Basically, and, you know, it might not be your fault, Nathan. You might have just got this from, your, you know, your Bizarro website that you go to to, you know, think that the Earth is a conspiracy or whatever. Um, so, so basically what they're saying in some of them is that when we take photos, we cannot see the stars. And they're talking about seeing it in the photo. And the reason for that is because the exposure has to be turned way down because space in daytime is so bright. So you've taken things alongside with people saying, hey, in a spacesuit, when you're actually out there, you can see the stars, you can even see planets, you can even see nebula or, you know, these clouds kind of thing. Um, with people that are saying, hey, when you take a photo, you can't see stars and you've basically chopped it up so it seems like they're saying different things. I mean, well done for your, your you know, sort of um, um, video editing or whoever did the videos, video editing, but that is essentially what they're saying. So you're, you're conflating two different things, but, you know, it appears conflation is your bread and butter. So you're saying that you can see the stars and planets and Magellanic clouds, but when you take a picture, you can't see the stars. Right. And, and oh. In, in the photo. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. And you think that makes sense? Well, in photography, it does make sense because if you turn the exposure way down, 
and there's a bright source of light like the sun, you're not going to see the lower light sources. And that's very well known in photography. Mark, did you know in none of those videos were they ever talking about photographs, they were saying that you can't see the stars. Did you None not know when you're talking about the photos, you can't see the stars? None so you of think those that videos. in photos that they don't have, they have stars on these photos that they take from space. Are you saying that? I'm saying that none of those videos were talking about photos, Mark. Not only do we not see photos of stars of, in space. Yeah, so we can't right? really tell because you've kind of, you know, chopped them up a lot. That's the thing. Uh, you can go back and rewatch the whole freaking interview. They're saying that you can't see the stars when you're in space, Mark. I can replay the video and share my screen if we need to. Do you want to watch it again? Yeah, so you've sort of chopped that up and just basically video edited to, for them to say, hey, you can't see the stars. Um, yeah, that's what they said. So, yeah, so they, they're talking about in when you take a photo. You that's can't not see what the they're talking the about. Well, I mean, you can... Prove it. Let's see well, where they it's, said. It's, hey, it's your video. One video I use where they're talking about photographs and it's, say in photographs, you can't see the stars. Show me well, one. The thing, the thing is about video editing is that you can take um, something out of context by basically starting. Prove video I took along. it out of context, and we can Mark. See, we, can see these, um, we can see these chops that you've made in the video where they're very, very short amounts of talking, so you can interpret it however you want. As I said, the principle is quote mining, where you basically take small quotes out of what people have said. I encourage you to go and watch the entire thing, people at home, um, because this is, this is sort of the bread and butter of Flat Earth. They basically quote mine by chopping up video very small. They did it to Buzz Aldrin as well and sort of said, oh, he said this, he said that. Um, when that you take it out of context with chopping it up, like like Nathan has done here, um, that does seem to say that. But you've got to look at the entire context. Okay, can you show me one entire context that shows they were talking about photographs? You want me to show you a half hour video or something? No, not at all. Can you just show me one yeah, so 30 second clip where I took a clip out and miss you. Yeah, so Sharing I'm not doing your homework for you, Nathan. Oh, you can go and find the entire so you video. You don't have play, any mate, clue. So go for it. You just have Neither a whole do you. claim. Yeah, so this, this is sort of where yeah. Nathan does projection, where he claims all kinds of nutty conspiracy theories and all of That's this stuff. That's what you just And then did. doesn't, excuse me, I'm talking. Um, and then doesn't, did. and then doesn't, yeah, I'm talking. Thank you, Nathan. Um, he doesn't actually back it up with anything. He That's what you just about did. These you just said you wouldn't back it up. About yeah. these things. That's what you just did, Mark. He's talked about Photoshop, <laughs> about joking, anything bro. to back it up. He's talked about all of these things, made all kinds of assertions with nothing to back it up whatsoever. And then Their he wants to say, videos. hey, because I demand that the entire clip has to be taken in context, he's like, well, you've got to produce my evidence for me. And that is not the case at all. He has the burden of proof to show that this is actually the case, and he has not done that. All he's done is show pieces of clips in a, and conspiracy people do this all the time. They show pieces of clips. They want to say, hey, look, this person said this and this person said that. Yeah, when you have like five seconds of a clip, you may be able to take it out of context. Again, they did the same thing with Buzz Aldrin. They said Buzz Aldrin said we never met, went to the moon. When you watch the entire clip, in fact, what he's saying is we never went back to the moon. And they chopped it up to make it look like that's what he said. And it's, it's well, I mean, it's their bread and butter, as I've said. What about the CGI glitches I showed earlier, Mark? What's your explanation for those? Yeah, so anybody that's even watched a YouTube video or transmitted a YouTube video will know that artifacting can occur and glitches can occur, especially when you're transmitting it from sort of orbit through to a ground station and there are clouds and in, uh, like sort of weather patterns in the way. Glitches can occur, and these are just glitches. Besides sort of Nathan's fever dream here, we've got no evidence that these are actually, you know, some sort of conspiracy to show, to, uh, you know, change the video. Experts have looked at this who are very familiar with video evidence. They work on it professionally. And um, yeah, and they're not employed by NASA. They're just video and said, hey, this is a glitch from video transmission. And that is all. It happens. You watch a YouTube video, glitches occur. Um, I think you would have to be sort of very deceptive if you want to say, oh, well, I've, I've never seen a video glitch in this way before. It's just, it's just impossible. Um, transmission of video, it does happen. It's not, it's not anything that, that 
Like, where is your proof, Nathan, that this has been doctored? Where's your proof? This is an assertion that you've made. Where's your proof? Yeah, there. I, I got a video. I'll go ahead and share a screen. Thanks for asking. Well, where, where's your proof? You wanted proof. I was about well, to give it. Now shut up. Well, okay. no, I'm just asking. Where is it? I'm pulling it up right now. It's now your turn okay. to shut up. Okay. Excellent. So let's watch some NASA bloopers since Mark asked for it. Okay. Uh, knows it's all <laughs> pain of vanity and deception. Rain is red. But what a wind. You see that, Mark? It's changing directions, accelerating and decelerating. That <laughs> That's can't no. be, that Sorry, can't go be ahead. ice flying off the ISS. I know you get super triggered when I talk over you, but you have no problem doing it with me all the time. So that can't be ice, Mark. It's look at it. Okay, That's not going 17,000 miles an hour, Mark. That's what they told you. How about this? A guy ghosting out of screen. I have a friend who does green screens here in LA. He'll go to parties and have all sorts of props in front of a green screen. He'll take pictures for people. Now, Mark, how does someone ghost out of screen like that if they're not on a green screen? Please explain. Okay, so this is not proof. This is just basically pointing to video glitches and things like that and saying, hey, I have a friend. This is the best thing. I love this. I have a friend. So my mate says, um, which is the my level friend, of the level, excuse me, excuse me. He's an expert. Um, this is, excuse me. Oh, okay. The, the level of, this so is the is level, this Don't is the more. level of, evidence that like flat earthers want to provide my mate says and i reckon he's an expert yeah you have absolutely nothing to back this up absolutely nothing this is useless he's basically looking at a video saying i reckon this is fate that's my opinion well no one cares nathan you need to show that that is actually not just a glitch of the video okay, how, how are you showing that how does that how happen are you Yep, it's called artifacting. Artifacting. It, so this yes, is artifacting. as the video is transmitted, it can artifact. And, and experts do say that. And you're basically saying, well, actually, my mate says. Um, yeah, what if the whole this, this image mate. have to artifact? How come only the person artifacts, Mark? It can happen, yes. Because okay, when you you've got a example. still image, a still image, and then you've got exactly the same background, and a person's in the foreground, upon movement, it can artifact and show another frame sort of overlapped with it. It can All happen. Right. It's the way that data transmission works because what you're doing is you're streaming data down. And if that data repeats and is interspersed, it can do something like this. Now, exactly how it happens, if you want to give me the, if you want me to give you the exact, like, coding of, of this particular video being um, downloaded from its source, then no, I don't have that. But these things do happen. And your, your answer to these things happen, where's your actual proof this is a, a cover-up and not an artifacting error, is my mate says. Uh, no, can you show me one example? Here's the million dollar question mark. Can you show me one example where someone Ghosts out of screen, aka artifacts, according to you, and the rest of the image is perfectly fine. The million dollar question, just show me this happening on a real video, preferably one that you took, but maybe you could show me this happening somewhere. <laughs> Does this happen on videos myself. that you make? People just turn into ghosts as they leave the room? Yeah, so this is more conflation because I'm not sort of transmitting through a, uh, well, I mean, it's essentially the same as a satellite connection down to Earth, which satellite connections are notoriously famous for being affected by clouds and weather and things like that. That is something that can happen. But I'm not doing that. So it's a complete conflation. Just um, ask for one really, example, Mark. Really, I know you're talking I don't, a lot. I don't have to do one anything. Example. I don't have to do anything. You what Nathan any has evidence. to do is to show that this is actually right. this is actually a um a doctored video, which he has yeah. not done. All he can do is an appeal to some random mate 
that reckons it is a, a fabricated thing. Um, could we stop sharing the screen? I have no oh, idea why. Actually, I got um, more proofs. NASA's faking stuff. I was just wondering if you could give one evidence of someone ghosting out of screen or artifact. Yeah, this isn't you your said, presentation, Mark, Nathan. Mark, this I was talking again. I know Can you we love just go back to talking? You're getting annihilated. But the problem is you don't have any evidence for what you're saying, Mark. So when I ask for evidence and you go, I don't have to back up what I'm saying. You just run my mouth and make bold, empty claims. That's what no, it's actually you that making you look the claim. Ridiculous. You're making the claim that it is doctored. I, I'm not making that claim. You are. Look you at it. The it person up. turns into a ghost, yeah. Mark, and you can't show yeah. me one example of that happening elsewhere. Well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know you that in the, the debate. debate. So uh, I didn't know that in the debate I'd be required to provide video on this because basically some nutcase is asking for me to produce a video. Can you produce a video um um, that shows that a NASA launch is uh, um, artifacts like it's fate. Can you provide that, please? I never made that claim. So well done on the straw man. No, well, then you don't have topic. evidence that it's fake. You don't have evidence that it's fake then. Congratulations. Never, We're working on your logic. So you don't have evidence that it's fake. Must be true. You lose. That's the level oh, of Mark. reasoning you are doing right now. No, oh. it's your reasoning. It's your well, reasoning because you can't well, produce Mark, something I have demanded on spot for <laughs> some reason, then you lose. That is the reasoning that you are going through right now. Hey, Mark, can you maybe explain this one for me? Uh, when she smiles, uh, there, the reflection does not move. So she's got the reflection in the bubble. Oh, she opened her mouth and closed her mouth. And the reflection. I, I didn't even say that. It's on screen. Maybe you should open your eyes. <laughs> you can't see anything from that yeah this is this is sort of conspiracy thinking and and sort of um yep. um yep. you know just sort of this uh, but the, the reflection does move see it's at the top right hand side there and the way that light refracted is that's exactly what you would expect to like it is moving what are you talking about it was at the top right and then moved to the center what are you talking about oh no skip past it go back to the start the of reflection it. is not no smiling. go back go back to the start of it you can't tell it's from that reflection. reflection it's completely distorted you cannot tell whether she's smiling or not uh, she's oh you're not joking smiling. right you must well, be joking. i can see I can see, see this I don't is the know level of see. fever dream that Nathan is at. Well, you've yep. got a reflection in a bubble that you cannot make out any details in. It's at the top right, right? And, and then, like, it moves down to the centre, which is exactly what you would expect with something like this. You cannot tell if she's smiling or not because the image is so distorted. And then he's like, oh, well, that's evidence of a... What, what am I... What? A, seriously? Seriously? I mean, you're the one who believes in a medium you've never been to, will never travel to, and you say, I have uh -huh. fevered dreams. Mark, yeah. you have fevered dreams. And you want to oh, give that's, these that's people good. $60 million a day, and you want to force children to learn mm -hmm. about hocus pocus, booga booga nonsense because some guy in a pool told you he went into the vacuum of space at 18,000 miles an hour, five miles a second, and you're gullible enough to believe him. Congratulations, well, Mark. No, you no. No, no, that's that's not the reason. It's because because of all of the progress we have made um, in aeronautics, rocketry, all the stuff they produce. I know produced, we have fire all of the um, all of the. Excuse me, Nathan. Could you please yeah. uh, calm yourself and actually let me speak? Um, we we've seen um, all of the things that they have produced. We've seen um, multiple video images. These video images, um, even before that, we've seen photographic evidence before CGI even came out. There's the blue marble shot, which is the complete photo that Flat Earth has always asked for. Um, we, we've got multiple instances of them doing this. We have things that they have produced. What has Flat Earth produced? as far as technological advances to show that they are right in their scientific endeavours? Mark, what have we're they not produced? here to talk about what Flat Earth does or doesn't do. The topic of the debate well, I'd is... I'd like to know. Trust... Shut up, Mark. I'm in the middle of talking. Can I'd we like trust NASA or not? Now, you're over here saying, mm -hmm. we have a photo. It's called the Blue Marble. Robert Simmons was the person yep. who created the Blue Marble image. And he has done... <laughs> He has done interviews. I don't know, you can laugh. It wasn't a joke. He actually is the one who created 
That's why it says here, conversations with Goddard, that it has the employee from NASA, Robert Simmon, and he says, he starts with a blank circle, and he puts together scans of the earth. I don't know if you missed this in my opening. <laughs> yeah, this is opening. hilarious. So Robert Simmons like, not did funny. this. We give these people $60 million a day, and you're Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's hilarious, and it I'll up. explain you're why. You're trying to defend them. Uh, yeah, I'll explain. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'll explain why it's hilarious. Because look at the age of this guy. Okay, this is this is the hilarious thing about it. Because Robert Simmons created this image in 2002 for the iPhone. <laughs> so he took the blue marble picture and he basically made it look prettier for to put on the Apple iPhone because the blue marble is a bit drab. So he actually did it up in 2002. But Nathan's claiming, this is this is hilarious, Nathan is claiming that he doctored the photo back in 1970-something because at the time he wasn't born. <laughs> hey, try and contain yourself, Mark. He said he started with a blank circle not an image of the earth <laughs> not the blue marble image of the earth laugh it up buddy you're getting annihilated i am i really they am started it's with hilarious. a blank circle then they took scans of the earth he added a specular highlight because balls that reflect lights have a specular highlight makes it look more like a ball okay he even says all this he had to make the blank circle that he started with look like a ball and you're over here telling us it's a in picture. 2002. It's a in picture. 2002. In 2002. I don't know when he did it. I've listened to the interview. I wasn't. But when there. did he do it then? I, I mean, you're you're claiming stuff. When did he do it? When All did right, he do well, it? Well, let's read it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what did you do is most interesting about your rubble at Gartered? Uh, my role is to make imagery from Earth sciences data. I turn data into pictures. I look for new interesting events that nasa satellites have seen or that are hidden in the latest data to find interesting that shows off nasa's unique capabilities okay so this is this is him saying he takes data and turns it into pictures and when did he do that um this interview was uh it was this article is from 2012 yep but when did he do it I'll give you the answer. It's 2002. So you're basically saying that um, a guy that did it in 2002 and the blue marble was taken on the 7th of December, 1972, that somehow, somehow, like get this, this is hilarious. Somehow these two images are the same, even though they are 30 years apart. No, I'm sure. Look at the picture of this guy. Look how young he is. Like, this is this is the fever dream that Nathan is in. He thinks that somebody in their 20s took a picture and manipulated it 30 years earlier. So wait, you said we have a real photo. It's the blue marble and it was taken 30 years uh -huh. before that guy said what he said. So so yeah. you guys don't have any other real photos, just a photo from like 1980. 1980, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're uh, talking 30 about. years prior to 2012 would be approximately um, Mark. Can I Since share I'm my flat screen? Earther, yeah, I'll, I'm, I can do math. Yeah, I'll just share my screen. Just one sec. Planet Africa? Are you saying this yeah. is a real photo? So this, right? is, this is the blue marble taken by um, Apollo 17 crew in, as you can see, 1972. Um, this is the actual blue marble and not the blue marble screensaver that was basically made a lot prettier, a lot brighter. Um, so it looked pretty on, on a phone screen. And this is the original picture that was taken in 1972. So let, let, let me just explain this to you. Nathan is claiming that a guy not born when this picture was taken <laughs> um, doctored this photo and it looks completely different than the photo that he showed. Um, but instead, somehow this debate, was doctored by Robert I Simmons. Played. Um, this is before he was born in order to fool people back in 1972. Now you're just being disingenuous because anyone watching the debate is going to see one. that I never actually claimed that. Hey, let's get that photo back up on the screen, Mark. If we could, please, Good I'd one. like to talk about it. 
Uh, good one, mate. This is hilarious. I want to thank you, Nathan. This is, oh, I am. I am. I really yeah, am. You are, um, you are this, is, this is actually. Can you get that picture um, back up, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. Give me a sec. Um, this is actually pretty funny. I mean. Um, how many continents does Earth have, Mark? Seven. Okay. How many are visible in this picture? One. I mean, two <laughs> if you include Antarctica. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's good, Mark. Sorry. I get to laugh too. All right. Let me laugh too. You're saying yeah. that this is a picture of the earth and there's mm -hmm. only one continent on one mm -hmm. side. You're saying yeah. that six other continents are on the other side of this ball? Well, not on the other side. They're onto the sides. You can sort of see um, very, <laughs> I just, very I just asked how many you can see and you said one. Well, I mean, you can't really see Australia. You can't you really can't see, see them. So the are, if you can't yeah. really see them, then that means they are yeah. really on the other side. Yeah. It's a ball. So, so when you say other side, it's kind of this really fuzzy language because you're talking like, oh, this is 50% of the earth. It's actually taken from a position under the earth and not a lot of continents are in um, the southern hemisphere of the earth. As you can see from the Middle East, you, you, it's basically looking from... Um, I mean, there's no below in space, but it's looking from the underside if, if Antarctica is the, the, the bottom. So up, so you cannot see any of the Northern Hemisphere or very, very little of it. So you can sort of see the edge of China and India, which is the continent of Asia, but it's not really clear. So um, the, the, the ones you can see clearly are Africa and Antarctica. But because there are so few continents in um, the, the south of the equator, as opposed to North America, um, um, Europe, Asia, um, you cannot see a lot. Yeah, yeah, I'll agree. You can't see a lot. You said you yeah. could only see one. Two, <laughs> Antarctica. Well, I mean, I, I, I forgot Mark. about Antarctica in, in for Mark. like one second. I think it's, a, a, you know, that is a continent, although it's one that nobody... Uh, very few people permanently live on, so it kind of skips your mind. But it, but it is a continent, yeah. Hey, speaking of Antarctica being content, while you got yeah. the uh, internet there open, could you open a new tab and Google pictures of the South Pole from Space Mark? That'd be great. No, not really. I mean, okay, I'll do it for you and then I'll share my screen. Go for it. Sure. Excellent. So we'll go. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm not your servant, Nathan. I'm not, you know, well, required to do what you ask. Uh, because this is going to really hurt your argument. I understand why you wouldn't want to do it. Um, and while Nathan is looking that up, we have about 15 more minutes of open discussion okay. before we go into the Q&A, sending love so, out there. Yeah, while Nathan is doing that, I'll just sort of explain that, that sort of when he said, I'll research the Bible, it's really just his religious view that the earth is a flat disk. It really just comes down to that. So while sort of NASA is using scientific experimentation and the, uh, the scientific methods to show, um, the, the, um, this is just a religious argument, essentially. Yes, your entire argument is religious. You've never been to space. You simply believe men who've been there and their founders of that company were all Satanists and Freemasons. Excellent. So now that I- Yeah, you've got up, no evidence of that. You've got absolutely that no evidence. Up. Well, I'd like to address that point. Thank you. Um, there's no evidence of that. This is just another fever dream claim from Nathan. Just, oh, they're all Satanists. He's got no evidence of that. He's just putting out, you know, disparaging remarks against very hard workers who do things that he can't do. Excellent. So now that I've pulled up, Mark, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. I pulled up pictures of the South Pole from space. All right. Excellent. Now, Mark, I would like you to tell me which one of these are real. Wait, tell me when to stop. Okay. Tell me when you see one that looks real. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I've never oh, uh, uh, investigated right. I'll keep pictures. Don't worry, Mark. Maybe you'll find yeah, one. Oh, I, I don't wait, know I'm what this done. is. I'm not done, Mark. Let me finish, okay? You, you haven't seen them all. You haven't so seen them all. Orbital, all the... orbital trajectories usually don't... Well, there's one of the South Pole uh, head topics um, The the uh, and the photo next to it from Business Insider. Is oh, a photo. picture of a storm. You're going to say that is Antarctica. Yeah. Yeah, lights up South Pole. Yeah, because that's that's sort of what happens in the South the Pole. The aurora world. lights up the South Pole. You're saying that this is Antarctica. That's a picture of Antarctica. Mm-hmm. That's a storm, Mark. You're looking okay. silly, bro. You look silly right now. 
Well, I mean, what do you what do you want for the weather to be clear? Well, what I want Nathan? was when maybe I you could up, maybe you could ask like you know the the god that you think is so real to clear up the photo for you if you if, you know because obviously he's in control of the weather. But what's funny is that this is a religious argument from Nathan. It's not from me, but it is from him. But apparently, his god can't provide him with enough evidence to convince anybody. It's it's absolutely hilarious that an all powerful god can't seem to you know. Give, give Nathan the knowledge to show that NASA is wrong or, or you know, invent something. He can't invent anything. He's absolutely, I mean, the only thing Flat Earth produces is hot air and that's all. Even though they've been around longer than NASA, they've had every opportunity to do some research, some, some kind of scientific revolution, and they get nothing. Instead, they're doing this, sort of going, oh, which, which on this uh, YouTube search is real and which isn't? I, I don't really care. This is a Google search, Mark. And you asked what I wanted. What I wanted yeah, was Google you, search. Yeah, yeah. Was you to tell me which one of these? And photos. I did. Thank you. And you said that this is the real photo of Antarctica. All right, good times. That was good. Right on. We, well, we, I mean, we, I can't, I can't determine what Google brings <laughs> up and which doesn't. You know, so, so this is the thing. It, it's this fever dream of well, if you can't show me um, in my terms and make the terms completely unreasonable, then um, you have to be wrong. And, you know, I mean, Nathan's welcome to his beliefs, but nobody shares those beliefs because Nathan isn't doing anything to prove them. All he's doing is the usual conspiracy theory of, I'm going to throw this out and then, you know, sort of make it so specific and so wild that you have to disprove everything. This is this is sort of what is done with conspiracy theories when people have a high conspiracy theory mindset and a low scientific intelligence. What they do is they'll throw out conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory and hope that nobody notices that they're not actually doing anything to back it up, which is what Nathan is doing. Yeah, uh, saliva boiling in a vacuum. That's just a conspiracy yeah. theory. I just made it up, even though I showed you a video from NASA. Astronauts contradicting themselves, saying that you can see stars in space and planets and Magellanic clouds, but then other astronauts saying it's totally black, you can't see it. It's just a conspiracy theory that I just made up, even though I showed video of the astronauts saying it with their freaking mouth. Do, do, do whatever, Mark. Let's move to Q and A. You're a goofball, bro. We're yeah, done. Um, there's you think no the reason storm to call is Antarctica. Names, Nathan. There's you no think reason. The storm to call is names. Antarctica, bro. This is a storm. There's the eye yeah, of the. Yeah, try right and there. calm yourself down. You're like calm that's yourself our, you're down. like that's Antarctica. So, yeah, so so somebody's gone off the off the rails. I think maybe calm yourself down and stop throwing around names, Nathan, and then sort of understand that all you do is present these chopped up videos, which make it seem like this. And as I pointed out, your your flat Earth cons conspiracy society did it the same for Buzz Aldrin, misrepresented him. That's very well documented. Um, all of this is the same sort of tactics you are using, and that's been demonstrated time and time again. It's why nobody believes you because the credibility of the flat earth movement is absolutely abysmal. Um, there's been so many things debunked that these guys have said. And so with that, I think we're about to move into a closing statement for both of our gentlemen interlocutors here. And then we are going to head into the Q and A, but I do want to thank everyone out there, especially those in the Chatosphere on Twitch and YouTube. We are actually getting closer and closer to 100,000 subscribers, and it is all because of you guys and gals up there. So I really do want to thank you. However, I want to give it one more chance to our interlocutors what do you have going on out there in the real world, on the internet, and also what are your final thoughts? Uh, do you want to go first, Nathan? Sure, go for it. no problem. Uh, so currently I had uh, YouTube deleted, so I'm not on YouTube really. I had my Instagram erased. I had my Facebook group with 155,000 members deleted. So I'm not doing much content creation anymore because they don't want you hearing people like me saying you can test the earth yourself. It's obviously not curving eight inches per mile squared in all directions. Just look at the reflection off a large body of water. That right there throws all of NASA's claims that you're on a globe out the window. Then you have the problem with gas pressure. 
what we breathe, they're telling you that all those lights in the sky you see at night are balls of gas in a vacuum. Ladies and gentlemen, balls of gas do not form in vacuums and they don't light up either. Okay, you put a ball of gas in a vacuum, it's not gonna just be this brilliant color changing star. That's ridiculous, okay? They want you to believe down is up and up is down because if you'll believe them on that, you'll believe all the other crap they're gonna tell you. Um, so yeah, and thanks for showing up to the debate. Sorry you had to get so annihilated, Mark, but it was my <laughs> pleasure. I appreciate you thinking that a hurricane is an actual picture of the South Pole. After I showed a hundred images, you picked the one that looks like a hurricane. Good stuff. All right. Well, thanks for moderating, Amy. It's been fun. I'm ready for the Q&A. And then I got to walk Gio because he is going crazy. Come here. Thank you so very much, Nathan. And then I'm going to hand it right over to you, Mark. What you got going on the interwebs and what are your final thoughts? Yeah, thank you, Amy. Yeah, I've got a debate coming up against uh, Christopher Malty um, for New Year's, which should be fun. Um, probably on is psychology a real science, which I'll be taking the negative just for fun, basically, which is great. Um, so Nathan, Nathan just doesn't really understand anything about testing, science, um, experiments, anything at all. He's not involved in the field. He's got no credentials in the field. He basically and Flat Earth has done nothing but produce hot air over the 100 plus years it's been in existence. Um, NASA has produced things. It has done experiments. It has shown the truth. Um, this, these whole, whole conspiracy theories and Nathan's religious views are just that. They're just a, um, um, a sort of a, a fever dream that he believes this thing to be true. Um, gas balls can form in space with enough gravity. That's been demonstrated. Um, the, the whole idea of the sun being plasma, well, Nathan hasn't done anything to show what the sun is, what the moon is. He basically shirks his responsibility of showing anything and basically just makes claims and then says, hey, prove me wrong. No, that isn't how the burden of proof works, little Nathan. It has to be you showing why you are correct, not me showing why you're wrong, because you haven't done so. You have just made assertions that this is doctored, that's doctored, my mate says it's doctored, Nobody cares what your mate thinks. Nobody. I'm really sorry, Nathan, but you have to come with more than just your assertions, conspiracy theories and things like that. And, and I noticed that he did not answer my very basic question, my very, very basic question at the start. Maybe he wasn't paying attention. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, is that who would take over aeronautics and space if not for NASA? And he didn't answer that. Didn't touch it with a ten foot barge pole. So you know, just fails to. I'll to answer do right now. Whatsoever. If you want to no, hey, 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 hey. I'll, this I'll is answer my, right now. Sure, okay. answer, answer. Go ahead. Who, who's taking it over? No one should take over faking space. No one. Space is fake. Nobody. So who should do aeronautics? Work. Uh, is is air, air no, space fake? We have the Air Force. I mean, we had the Wright brothers back before we had NASA. Okay, so we don't need NASA to build planes. We don't need NASA to make air scrubbers or fire blankies with half a trillion dollars of my money. Yeah, so that's irrelevant. So the whole idea that only military should be involved in flight is the dumbest idea. That's anyone not what I present. said. The Wright brothers. Excuse me. This is my. Uh, that's uh, not what my, I this said. Is my time. That's Nathan, this is, this is my time. This is my time. This is my time. disingenuous. This is my time. Shut, my shut up. I'm going to separate both of you. It's yeah, yeah. Fault. Don't take my yeah. vote. Well, I mean, you're, you're interrupting my closing, which is indicative of somebody who has no good arguments and just has to yell and scream. It's really indicative of how poor your argument is that you cannot adhere to you know, the sort of debate structure. Um, the reason why we don't just give all air flight to military and just whoever wants to do it is because of this mad guy that basically crashed his shuttle and died. It's too unsafe. We need an authority for this. And so basically what, what he's suggesting is that we just give it to the military. Civilian flight is just not a thing. It's the dumbest idea anybody has ever come up with. We have an aeronautic agency. We do, and they present to us the truth. The fact that Nathan doesn't want to believe it isn't their problem. It isn't my problem. It isn't anybody's problem. It's Nathan's problem. Thank you. Woohoo! And with that, I do want to thank both of our interlocutors for joining us on the debate. We are going to kick it off into the Q&A section for about 30 to 40 minutes. So if you have a burning desire question, please tag me at Amy Newman and your super chats will get sent right to the front of the list. In fact, 
monkey cat pat pat for two dollars is it say nathan just look up james may be in a vacuum chamber right let's uh, try and stick with english and complete sentences yeah. Send in love, monkey, cat, pat, if uh, I did you wrong or if you want to resend that in. But yes. Uh, $10 from Lusa Madongo to Nathan. I would love to discuss entropy and thermodynamics. You know, how to measure entropy, her unit of measure. Uh, right on, flatearthflyers at gmail.com. Hit me up. Thank you for both the question and the response. Uh, $10 super chat from Mark. For Nathan, the benefit of doing pool tests is being able to see bubbles for design flaws. You don't get that with everything less vacuum. You don't get that with everything less vacuumness. Please take a basic physics course. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you, so we could see the bubbles in the spacesuit. That's why they work in a pressurized environment when they're going to train to go to a non-pressurized environment. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. It looks like we're getting a comment in from Monkey Cat Pat is asking Nathan to look up James May in a vacuum. Seems like that's a name. So the question would be, Nathan, just look up James May in a vacuum chamber. Wait, is that the um, Top Gear guy, James May? Uh, while we're doing that, I do just have a quickly, I just want to share my screen just very quickly because I've managed to find a video with some um, ghosting as an artifact. Now that I've had a bit of time uh, to check my stuff, uh, are we sharing? Yeah, I can see it, Mark. Yeah. yeah, you are good. See that? See his cheek? Artifact thing. Uh, oh, so that's you, not you, an entire person. You requested, the, um, you requested the video, and there is the video. Thank you. OK. Also, how do we know he wasn't in front of a green screen? <laughs> Okay, you request the video, still doesn't believe it. Okay, good one, Nathan. And... I mean, you didn't listen to my point. My argument was that I know someone who does green screen for a living, okay? He's a subject matter expert. That's what he does for work. And he says the only way to make that happen is with a green screen. And that wasn't yeah. the entire Asian boy with glasses vanishing and turning into a ghost. It was just a small yeah. little portion of his chin. That's so, that's not that's yeah. not in front of a green screen. He's he's clearly at home. Um, oh, okay. You know, you Nathan so. Nathan doesn't want to believe the video. See, this is this is the thing why people don't get stuff for Nathan. He demands all this stuff. You present it to him, and he says, "Nah, I still don't believe it." So wh why bother? You know, why bother searching around for it? That wasn't analogous to what I showed you. Yeah, sure, cool story, bro. Yeah, show me the entire Asian boy with glasses. Walking off screen and vanishing and turning into a it ghost. Wasn't the entire, it wasn't the entire guy vanishing. It was like, yeah, it was. Do I and need then to Nathan, it? last yeah, no, thing, because it was for Thanks, you. Man. So, last statement. Sure. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, let's go ahead and show him vanishing completely off screen, uh, his entire body, since Mark's just a liar and will not admit that his entire body vanished off screen. So, it's at about 50 something seconds. There we go. That's the entire astronaut turning into a ghost and vanishing, not just his chin, his entire body, once he leaves the lighting in front of the green screen, he vanishes. So if you could show me something like that, Mark, really appreciate it. Next question, since it was for me, you don't have to talk anymore, Mark. $5 from Coffee Mom. Nathan, do you have an alternate explanation for how you are using the internet for this debate to replace the science and engineering based on a globe? Uh, internet doesn't prove you live on a globe, guys, okay? The proof you live on a globe would be if you went outside and observed Earth curving in all directions. That, and you can't. I did it for six years. Mark says, oh, I like to just make stupid, ridiculous claims and I don't do any tests or any experiments. I use lasers, infrared, 
high power zoom cameras. I've got pictures of me using telescopes, even though Mark says I'm afraid of telescopes, all to debunk the earth curve. And it wasn't even my intention to debunk earth curve. I just used those instruments to find out, is the earth curving or not? I prefer, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, NASA wasn't stealing $60 million a day and faking space and lying to us about where we live. I would prefer it if they were maybe using, you know, the, the money to tell us the truth and make space blankies and fire blankies and air scrubbers. That would be great. I would be on board with that. The problem is that they're not. And some people see it. Some people don't. Mark's very concerned with like how many people I can convince and nobody believes me. I don't care if nobody believes me because I'm right. I don't, I'm not in a cult where I have to look around and go, oh, does that guy believe in space too? Oh, does he believe in space? Oh, okay, well, we're all in the same cult. Cool, I don't care. If you believe all the same things everyone around you believes, look around, you're in a cult. Yeah, I'd just like to add something to that. You um, sure but, can, as long as you know, he has after the final that, statement. Yeah, absolutely, after that unhinged ranting that we saw. Um, the the um, camera that he's probably using probably uses technology from NASA. So the question was, um, how would you replace that technology that they have come up with? So I don't think it's really fair that you haven't actually answered the question. Did you just say that they probably came up with the technology and that I oh, need to explain how, how we would get it without them if they sure. probably came up with it, Mark? That was a yeah, question, Mark respond, but Nathan, yeah. you do have to have the final statement. Well, they, they did. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that, if you're that, talking that, about You're done, Mark. CMOS, you're done. CMOS I spent an hour talking to you. I got enough of a headache from you, bro. I don't have to look at your bald head anymore. I'm getting questions from the audience. Oh. Uh, Ad hominems right. now. That's nice. Ad you're, you're a really nice time guy. Time is done. You're Pull it, <laughs> Pull it you're both back. <laughs> well, actually, I was adding something, and the moderator said that was okay. So that that's sort of why I right. sort of said okay. something. Nope, but you're just, I, I mean, oh, come on, I know. Nathan, don't be I know. a baby. You got an alley. <laughs> what a match. <laughs> and on that, Victor, oh, am, yeah. for 500 shilling, uh, Kenyan shilling. Uh, Nathan, why are there no NASA whistleblowers, not even one? Oh, well, that's not true. I mean, I just spoke with one who worked for the Pentagon. Then he worked for NASA, and he currently works for Apple or Google. No, it's Apple. But uh, he was getting death threats. And um, look up Sydney Holland. She's a NASA whistleblower. She worked on the SR-71 with Lockheed Martin, and she's a total flat earther. Look up David Beverly. He's a NASA whistleblower. The problem is that when someone comes out and says, hey, I work for NASA, they're lying about everything, they either get death threats or you don't hear about them. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no credibility. I didn't work for NASA or nothing. I lost my YouTube group. I lost my Facebook group. I lost my Instagram, Tinder. Yahoo, Skype, Venmo. I mean, you, they silence a guy who lives in his van with his dog. And you don't think they're going to silence a NASA whistleblower, bro? I just talked to one last week. He said he was getting death threats. And he had to decide, do I want to tell people NASA's lying or do I want to keep my children? Okay? So that's why you don't see a lot of NASA whistleblowers. But it's not like they don't exist. It's not like they're not out there. And again, it's just globe cult rhetoric where give me someone to believe. Give me someone to believe. I, I can't go outside with a camera and verify everything they're saying is false myself. So how about I just get someone who works for NASA and believe whatever they say? It's stupid, dude. You guys are ridiculous. Yeah, so i just add something. No, if that's Mark, okay, but, it's a but, question for me. It's not your time well, every time. We're not going to well, do this. I, I we don't think, have enough time. You can I think uh, very piffy, but Nathan, you still yeah, okay. will. If it's a, always your question, you will always get the final uh, word. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. Um, so I, I don't know why Nathan got thrown off. As far as I understood it from people that I've talked to, it's because he was sort of peddling dangerous misinformation that could affect people's health um, on a subject that I probably won't bring up on YouTube because I don't want MDD to want it. Because you'll get so. censored because they have to make sure nobody questions anything. Yes. So when you, when you peddle me medical misinformation, that's when you get banned. And then I, I, I lost my, final my YouTube channel before COVID even started, goofball. So right, you, just look into it. You don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. I mean, so I can't imagine why wow, you're such a. I get guy. to close. No question wasn't for you, Mark. Two dollars super chat from uh, Shriek. Uh, can you get Professor Dave on the channel for a debate? Well, a fantastic question. We have actually had. Professor Dave here on Modern Day Debate. So go check those out on the catalog and on your favorite podcasting platform. But also, if you want to see Professor Dave or any 
of your favorite interlocutors out there on the interweb, please feel free to hit us up on Discord, on email, in chat, and we will uh, either find a way to reach out to them, or if you know them, even better, feel free to reach out. Uh, but yes, send in love. We're always looking for more great interlocutors, and Professor Dave's been on. Uh, Tim Pryor for $5. I love how these people complain about NASA, but have no problem using their technology. They are so hypocritical, it's not even funny. Well, we gave them $50 million yesterday, and you guys are upset that we use their space blankies and air scrubbers? All right, whatever, dude. But you can be upset about that. $5 from Bitter Truth. Nathan, can you please share your education if you mind just trying to know if you can explain cosmology? Can you repeat that question? Was that, did that make sure. sense? That was so convoluted. Uh, and sometimes people, uh, depending on their level, I always try and squeeze in, so I'm always sympathetic. Nathan, can you please share your education? If you mind just trying to know if you can explain cosmology. So it seems like there's two parts to the sentence. Uh, sharing education and can you mind explaining cosmology? Uh, yeah, I learned how to count with my fingers and toes and you should test all things and verify what's true for yourself. So. Well, thank you for the question, Bitter Truth, and the answer, uh, Nathan, and $5 super chat from Bahans. So he doctored the photo in 2002 to put on the first iPhone in 2007. Mark, why did it take him five years to edit that picture? Um, basically he edited the picture and then they used it for a rollout. So, um, the, the image is famous for being on the, the, the edited image is famous for being on the front of the, um, camera, but they just chose that image. He did the work beforehand to make a nicer image of the earth. Um, nobody's sort of trying to say that it's real and nobody's trying to say that. I think the better question is how did he edit the photo back in 1972 before he was born, I think is the better question. I think that's a permanent question because that seems to be what Nathan was claiming. So, you know, th this is the kind of wild conspiracy theories that we get into. It's, it's hardly surprising that we get these ridiculous things. But just because he edited it and then they decided to use it later doesn't mean that that doesn't really mean anything. Thank you for that question, Bonds, and that answer, Mark. And then another $5 super chat from Tim Pryor. Nathan's okay with them taking scans of Earth, but at the same time denies pictures can be taken of it and can't be measured. Yeah, if we lived on a flat earth and it wasn't a globe, it would be very simple to scan the earth. I heard someone that was in aviation school, flat earther, and uh, they asked their professor, how long would it take for um, all, the, all the planes that do surveillance to map the entire earth? And he said, well, if you had about 12 planes, they could do it in about a day. And so, yeah, scans are very possible to take on a flat earth or a globe. The problem is... When you're telling people you have a picture of a globe and it's comprised of a bunch of scans that you started with a blank circle, added a specular highlight to make it look like a ball, and then adjusted the brightness and make it look pretty, it's not a real image and it shouldn't be portrayed as real and we shouldn't be teaching it to kids as if it's the truth when you can go outside and verify that it's not. And a... 50 New Zealand dollar super chat from Kango44. Question for Nathan. Given you have no formal education in physics, cosmology, math, computer graphics, chemistry, biology, geology, photography, so can you please explain where you get your expert opinions from? Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I'm not super educated. 
But I'm smart enough to know that if the Earth's a bowl 24,901 miles around, it would curve at a rate of eight inches per mile squared, which means that just 10 miles, you would have 66 feet of drop tangent to your feet where you're standing. And that would be in all directions, not just like over there, but it would be over there, over there, over there, over there, in all directions. It would, so yeah, listen, you don't have to be the smartest person in the world to figure out that you're being lied to and NASA is not trustworthy, which was the topic of this debate. Not how many products do flat earthers put out and how many products do NASA put out. NASA gets $50 million a day. I don't know about, if you know this, but I get like $30 a month on my Patreon, okay? And people used to say five years ago, oh, Nathan, he's doing it for the money. I don't have a YouTube channel. I don't have anything. And I still come on here and tell you guys where you live. Like, when are you going to get this through your thick skulls, okay? I love you guys. That's it. Yeah, maybe don't. Um, I just want to add that that isn't the calculation for the curvature of the Earth. It's something that sort of flat Earth is, you know, sort of trot out. Oh, what is the calculation, Mark? Um, it's two times pi times r. So well, how much curve should we see over one mile? And then, Mark, after you answer that, Depends. Nathan, you um, have the final word. Yeah, yeah so if you could stop interrupting, Nathan, that would be great. Thank you. Um, so so basically, the, 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 yeah, it's not about um, what it produced, but it sort of shows the trustworthiness that they have um, had the results um, that we expect from a scientific laboratory and a scientific establishment, whereas Flat Earth isn't, then we haven't had the results we would expect from a scientific organisation. Um, that, that's my entire point. But it's also not about whether the Earth is round or flat, which Nathan wants to keep going back there because, you know, He's obsessed crazily on this notion. So um, the, the whole idea is, is NASA trustworthy? You have to first presuppose a flat Earth for them not to be trustworthy. And that is, you know, another debate topic entirely. And I've, I've let it go because I want to be generous. But, you know, Nathan's hooked on this thing. That's so. not true at all. Owen Benjamin was a glover and he didn't believe in the moon landing and didn't trust NASA as far as you could throw him, dude. And, and he was adamant that we didn't go to the moon not trust NASA, and he did not want to be a flat earth believer. So this idea that you just said you have to believe in a flat earth to distrust NASA is ridiculous and not true. And on that $5 super chat from Bitter Truth, Nathan, what's re retro reflector array? What's retro reflector array? I don't know. Yes. Glober learned a new word, and he's like, oh, I want to ask Nathan if he knows what this word is. Uh, it's going to prove something. It doesn't prove anything. I don't know what the word is. You know, Send me an email. Let me know all about it. Thank you so very much, Bitter Truth. Also, if you want to tag uh, me again, we'll also ask it again. But also, thank you for your answer, Nathan. Uh, moving forward, can go for 44 for $5. Question for Nathan. Did you stack toilet paper really high to disprove NASA? No, it's actually a funny story. I got flown out from Virginia to LA by a couple guys that said they were Harvard students. Turns out they weren't. They were liars, like the people at NASA, because people who love liars will also turn out to be liars themselves. So they folded toilet paper. They said they did a a uh, test with Borat and Kazakhstan. And uh, yeah, they paid for everything and lied to my face. And quite frankly, I think they're a bunch of losers. So, but they did it, not me. Go watch the video. Come on, it was kind of funny. You've got to admit, it was kind of funny. It was pretty hilarious. Yeah, I'll agree. Yeah. You know, but if you got to lie and, and put on a whole charade to be funny, it's, it's really not that funny. I mean, you could be funny without lying to people, without flying them away from their home and their family and their pets and their animals and then and making them waste their time. Okay? It's not really cool. It's disingenuous, Mark. $5 super chat from Tim Pryor. Nathan, you literally said he's the one that came up with the blue marble when the original was before he was born. The blue marble was what, maybe I was mistaken. I thought the blue marble was what showed up on the iPhone when people turned it on. And the creator of that says he started with a blank circle. It was not a picture of the earth. So when this guy says we have pictures of the earth, it's a blue marble. Maybe I was a little confused. Maybe he was talking about a different picture than what I was talking about. But hallelujah, he pulled up the picture and said that there was one continent on that side of the globe, which means there would be six other continents 
including the largest one on the other side. <laughs> brilliant. Excellent. Brilliant. Just crushing it. Crushing um, yeah. So I, I just got something to add to that. If you don't believe me, maybe get yourself a globe, like an actual globe, um, you know, one that spins kind of thing in one of those things and look at it from the angle that that picture is taken and see how many continents you see. And I actually said two after, you know, realizing that Antarctica was in the picture, but thanks for misrepresenting me, Nathan. Cheers. Last statement, Nathan. Uh, actually, you did say one. Okay, anyone can go back and watch the debate. You said one, and then you changed your answer. Five dollar okay. super chat from fans. Mark, you can read the founders of NASA and JPL books and papers. They tell you what they believe. Just because you haven't read them doesn't mean it's fake. Uh, what? I, I... I'll read that again. Mark, yeah, I... you yes, can I read the founders of NASA and JPL books and mm. papers. They tell you what they believe. Just because you haven't read them doesn't mean it's fake. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I guess so. It's just um, um, NASA and, and, I mean, I'm presuming you mean NACA, the NACA, um, because that's where NASA c came from. Um, so I presume that's what you're talking about. Um, they, they aren't the same organisation back when they were sort of storing biplanes in barns kind of thing. Um, this is called a genetic fallacy where you're basically sort of saying, well, the thing, if its origin has this origin, it must be the same thing. And that is not true. It, it, it's called a genetic fallacy. It's like saying, oh, well, um, you know, um, Originally, when when we had um, 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 you know were beating people with with rocks, um, you know as cavemen or whatever, so therefore rocks must be used for that purpose. That's it's not the same thing. Um, the origin does not determine the current usage. Um, and if you want to do do look up that fallacy, but yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly what they're getting at. So I'll leave it with that. And. 500 from Victor again. Nathan, do you have any scientific evidence that contradicts anything NASA has produced? Yeah, NASA produces pictures and tell you you live on a globe. Well, the evidence that's not true is hydrostatics, which state it's the study of bodies of water at rest that any body of water at rest will be level and horizontal to its container. Now you can look up the word level, it means free of bends, curves, and irregularities. The uh, synonyms would be flat, plumb, flush, and straight. So, uh, you, yeah, I mean, just go outside. Water is the easiest proof. Everything NASA says is a lie. They steal $50 million a day. We need to stop giving these people money. We need to take these people to court so they can hang them high for high treason. That's what we need to do, straight up. Thank you for your question, Victor, and your response, Nathan. And $5 from Shane Cup. Someone tell me why all the pictures NASA has of satellites are CGI. No real pictures. Yeah, that's because uh, there are no real satellites. Uh, temporary helium balloons, um, surveillance planes or drones. You can do everything they say they do with satellites with you know, a few things that we already have here on Earth. So, and I, that didn't say that was question was for me, Mark. You want to add anything? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, it's because, I mean, we see parts of satellites, like the one that I showed where you saw the solar panel, but the problem with taking a photo of a satellite is that you need another body to hold the camera, as it were. Um, so um, it's, a, it's a major problem with things like the, um, I mean, the ISS is technically a satellite. So you do see pictures of that sort of, you know, on an angle taken from um, exterior cameras um, of the ISS. So those are real photos. So we do see real photos of satellites. It's just you basically will say they're fake because, um, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, if, if, if you're talking about these photos that Nathan's so, so kindly showing, um, where, wh who's holding Wait, the camera? you said photos? Can't we? Did you say yeah, photos? Well, Which one's a photo, yeah. Mark? Which so one? The, yeah, Nathan, this is my time to talk, mate. So, you know, be quiet. Um, so these these pictures are like where where what what do we have to do like launch another um, satellite to take a picture of the satellite 
this is a problem because we can't do that. It's, it's unfeasible to do that. But like if you go up and, you know, I noticed that Nathan's skimming past that if you go up, we do have partial shots of something like the ISS, like down a bit. Uh, down a bit. Down a bit. Yeah, so up a bit. Oh, my God. All right. So, yeah, maybe, maybe I should do this. Yeah, it's on the left, spotting satellites in orbit. So we, if, if, they're mount, if the camera is mounted on the exterior of a satellite, we can take the photo. Um, if they're not, we cannot take the photo because we don't have, like, somebody up there holding the camera, as it were. That's why there's not a lot of actual shots of satellites because we, we can't launch a satellite to take a shot of a satellite. It's just not practical. That's why we don't do it. But if something's mounted on an exterior of a large satellite and sort of the ISS or, you know, another satellite, or if, if a space shuttle is doing servicing of a satellite, we can take a photo of it. I don't know what Nathan's doing right now. I've got no idea. I was going to say, are we, I'm going to move I, I don't know. Go ahead, on. next question. Okay, just making sure. And on that, Christopher Custon for $5. Well, Nathan. Maybe shop this chair, Nathan, if you're finished with that, mate. Explain earthquakes on a flat earth. Mark, I know you can explain for a globe. So, uh, duh, duh, duh. Uh, Nathan, explain earthquakes on a flat earth. Yeah, the floor shakes sometimes, and it's not a globe, it's flat. Now, the deepest hole dug is seven miles. So Mark can show you all kinds of cartoons about different layers of the earth and how what's below our feet is actually hotter than the surface of the sun. But not only is that illogical and false, it's just made up. They don't know because they've only been seven miles deep. So... I don't have to know what's direct, everything going on under the earth to test and verify that it's not curving in all directions. So see, falsification is independent of replacement, which means if I can prove the earth's not a globe, I don't have to come up with every answer for everything. Why do we put milk in our cereal? How come bread rises when you cook it? I don't need an answer for all that. I falsified the earth curve. That's what, so it's not a globe like they claim. So they can stop stealing $50 million a day from us, probably give some of it back. That'd be nice. Yeah, so um, I think it was directed to me as well. I'll just sort of say that, um, yeah, so when you go 10 miles underground, it gets up to like 900 degrees. It gets hot down there. We know this for a fact. Um, it's not a, not a surprise. Um, so plate tectonics, the way that plates are basically moved by convection currents underneath the earth um, in the magma. And we know magma exists down there because, you know, volcanoes, I don't know how, you know, Nathan explains that one might be a good question to follow up. Um, but basically they move the, the plates, the plates rub against one another in a lateral way to create earthquakes. They hit one another and at very slow speeds. This is sort of very, very um, long periods of time. Some are subducted and that causes um, a shaking of those uh, continental plates or localised to um, the fault lines on those plates. And that causes the earthquakes that we experience. And... That question, Amy, that question was not for him at all. He said, I know Mark so could explain it. it, it, it oh, I thought it, it was it, mentioned. It me. included you both. I think it definitely wanted you to answer, Nathan. Well, do you want but the if last you want word, Nathan, Nathan? Yeah, I'll let you have yeah, the last yeah, I word. I think he should have the last word then. Yeah, you just said we know it's hot down there. And then you guys want me to explain volcanoes and earthquakes. Okay. The, it's in the, um, uh, the, the HARP documents that HARP could actually create earthquakes. So the earthquakes don't all have to be natural. They could also be man-made. So, and look into it. I know you laugh, but there's like eight things that, that HARP does, including um, mapping underground. They can do all sorts of things with HARP other than uh, sending frequencies into the air. So it's a multi-purpose establishment. They do like eight different things. So I'm just saying, I mean, uh, the earthquakes don't all have to be natural. Some of them could be man-made. That's admitted in their documents. So, uh, he has in a uh, addendum for the super chat, Nathan. If you would also like 
Do you have any opinion on lava or magma? Yeah, it's hot. I got, that's my opinion on it. It's really bright and it comes from under the ground, which Mark and I will agree, it's really hot down there. And you got a lot of pressure. Anytime you add a lot of pressure to something, it gets hot. So if that makes sense that you would get some type of lava or magma. Definitely doesn't prove you're on a globe though. Thank you so very much, Christopher, for your super chat and Nathan and Mark for your responses. $5 super chat from Tim Pryor again. Tim, thank you for all the super chat. Love another lie by Nathan. All astronauts were not Freemasons. Literally two seconds of research says otherwise. I never said all astronauts were Freemasons. It's an obvious straw man. Anyone watching the debate, go back. Look at the debate. Find out when I said all astronauts were Freemasons. I said there's a connection. Uh, Buzz Aldrin was admittedly, he admits he took a Freemasonic flag to the moon and walked around when he was playing golf and riding around on dune buggies 60 years ago, which we destroyed the technology. And it's a painful process to do again. So, yeah, <clears throat> good times. So thanks for the question, Mark, or, uh, or Tom Reed, whatever that guy's name was. Uh, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, yeah. Nathan. And then another one for Earth is Light for $5. Nathan, what's the distance between jo Jonasburg and Sydney on f a flat Earth? Uh, not sure. Haven't measured it. So kind of a silly question. I mean, I don't know. Thank you so very much, Earth is Life, for your super chat and that answer, Nathan. And Kango44, again, thank you for 10 New Zealand. Nathan, I took your advice and tested the Earth myself. It's a globe. Nathan, why don't you do T-Jump radar experiment? You could measure the shape of the Earth yourself. <laughs> yeah, these guys want me to spend ten thousand dollars to do a test that T Jump hasn't done, doesn't have any proof of. Says he did it, but there's no evidence. So that's a really cool story. But they want me to spend ten thousand dollars when I already spent uh, thousands and thousands of dollars on high power telescopes, uh, the highest power zoom camera that's majorly manufactured, the P one thousand. I bought two of those, and I had a P nine hundred when that was the highest power zoom camera camera that was available. So this idea that like, oh, Nathan, he just refuses to do all this stuff. Like nice, bold, amply cl claim that you tested the earth and it was a globe. Okay, cool story. Where is the evidence for that? I'll be waiting for that YouTube video, globe head. Well, I, I think the point is that it's pretty easy to find a ham radio. You can sort of rent one or find somebody that's got one. It's not exactly difficult, Nathan. I think they're sort of asking why you haven't sort of taken steps to do it. If it's so easy to do, why hasn't mm. T-Jump, the guy who proposed it, done it, Mark? He has. He said he did. Oh, he, he said he worked did. With ha oh, yeah, he and worked you're with over here saying, oh, it's so university. easy to do. It's so easy to do. You could just rent one. Yeah. Oh, well, why doesn't he have any proof, Mark? Well, they do it in universities all the time. Oh, like, yeah. It's just a standard America. experiment for radio yeah. telecommunications. That's, that's why they don't have any proof of it. Yeah. It's just standard. They just do it all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a globe, yeah. right? Thanks, Mark. It's, it's, it's like sort of experiments done in a vacuum chamber. Mark, I, I get the last word, chamber. not you. Haven't you figured that out yet, that you don't well, get I the mean, last word? So that means sure. you get to shut up and listen to me, and then we move on to the next question. That's how it works, okay? You have some kind of like, learning deficiency. Um, disability. Pulling both of our lovely interlocutors apart. Is as that a problem? Bitter Truth, $5 super chat. I'm going to read it how it is and then read it how I think it's It says, can you please tell me what is expanding universe equation and explain it how this works, Nathan? I think so. Can you please tell me what is expanding universe equation and explain how this works, Nathan? Yeah, see, Glover's love to like pretend if they have like a formula or like they can do math, it's like real. So like if they had a formula for how fast Superman flies, well, then that would prove that Superman's real and that Superman can fly. But the problem is they're saying that nothing, the vacuum of nothing, the universe of space is expanding. Okay, So that would require a barrier from the point where space is expanding from. Okay, So show me the edge of space, the edge of nothing first. Then we can talk about if that nothing is expanding into, into what? Into, into more nothing? 
I mean, do you guys realize how stupid you sound? I don't think you do. I, I'm trying to help you, but you sound incredibly dumb. $10 super chat from Indie Tigers Sci-Fi Review. I navigated ships in the Navy. Ships on the open ocean follow curved paths to reach their destination because the Earth is a globe. That wouldn't be needed if the Earth were flat. Yeah, that's cool. The U.S. Coast Guard puts out um, a geographic range table that lists distances you could see from at sea level. So if you were on a globe in the ocean, navigating the oceans, you would not be able to see as far as the geographic range table states. Also, you have the problem of celestial navigation. Okay, you're, you're asking, oh, you're expanding universe equation. Does Nathan know it? And then uh, balls of gas in a vacuum with enough gravity. If they have enough gravity, then they can become balls. Well, the gravity in space would be pulling everything toward everything else. So you wouldn't have constellations, which are fixed patterns of stars in the sky for thousands and thousands of years. If we're moving 66,000 miles an hour around the sun, which is moving 500,000 miles an hour daily, roughly 20 to 30 million miles a day. And you guys are over here like, yeah, well, I was on a boat and I navigated and it's a globe. Um, well, that's a cool story, but I verified it to be false. So thanks for the super chat. Thank you, Indy Tiger Sci-Fi Review and Nathan. And $5 super chat from Thunderstorm. Half a trillion and so many homeless? Real or fake, there is something evil about it to me. Amen, dude. I mean, uh, but they gave us space blankies. And I think that's stuff. for me, uh, Nathan. I think that question's actually oh, for me, mate. You, you can pretend. I mean, but it didn't say it was who it was for. <laughs> so, so basically they're saying there's something evil about what we spend on NASA, but it's to you. Is that what you're kind of claiming? Yeah, they wanted me to agree with him and clap. So that's what I'm doing. Sure. Go ahead, yeah, sure, Nathan. Another go ahead, fever man. dream. Here we go. Um, okay, so again, it's 0.5 of the total spending of the American government budget. The um, Just for reference, I'll just look up the Department of Defense um, spending um, per year and see where we're at from that. Um, yeah, so no, I'll agree. The money we waste. Nathan, on this question is for me. No, it wasn't. Hello? It was Hello? not specifically for you. It wasn't. You hallucinated well, where that. Where do you get your fever dreams from? You hallucinated oh, wow. that. They didn't just, say what it was for. <laughs> so you're claiming that they called the budget of NASA evil, and that is for the negative side of can we trust NASA? I didn't make a <laughs> claim. <laughs> you did, Mark. Yeah, Amy, could we make a call on who this question is for? Well, please? I am just, it, it sounded like you had something to say, Mark, on that. So yeah, gonna, I think well, so. I think Nathan's back in his delusion. I here. love both um, of our interlocutors. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the Department of Defense is like 1.64 trillion. Um, it, it, it's way it's so much more than NASA. Like seriously, um, I think it accounts for, and I'm, I'm not sure of a percentage actually what percentage that is. Um, I'll see if I can find it for you. But there's a lot of departments that do use uh, a lot of the budget, and it does go all over the place. I don't think it's evil considering the amount of um, sort of. Um, benefits it provides us and all of the things they've come up with and all of the, the research that we've made. And if you're not in a delusion like Nathan, you can see that that advance towards um, aeronautic travel and, and uh, uh, rocketry space travel is actually a really good thing that, that we're putting that money into. And, you know, for the 0.5% for, you know, of the budget, it's actually really cheap. Um, I think that even just being 1% of the budget would, would do a lot. And I, I wish my country spent more on space travel and less on defence, and I would say that that is the same for your country. Um, but it also provides a lot of technological advances that can help um, with warfare. It, it can help in our lives. Um, I, I don't think it's a great amount, and, and NASA takes a lot less money out of the budget than you would think. $5 super chat from Tim Pryor. Nathan... How many times have you been told that eight in formula is wrong or that in Hebrew there isn't even a word, NASA? Uh, no, yeah, it's, it's actually in the Strong's Concordance Bible. NASA is the word that Satan used. You know what, Amy, can I share my screen? Because I'm just going to go over this one real quick uh, because 
people just cannot figure this one out themselves. And it really just takes like 30 seconds of research. So blue letter Bible, um, Satan deceives Eve. So, um, blue letter Bible. Um, hopefully this isn't an article and this is the actual Genesis 126. No, oh, it's Genesis 3 where the fall is. Sorry, guys, I don't have the whole Bible memorized yet. I'm working on it. No, I don't want Exodus. One. Okay, so, Amy, I'm, he, there was a second part to that question. Can you remind me what that was real quick? Okay, here it is. There we go. Can you see my screen now, um, Amy? Yes. Okay, look, English beguiled me. Transliterated, N-A-S-A. -A. It says beguiled me. Look, the serpent beguiled me. The serpent nasa'd me. So how easy was that, Globeheads? Pretty simple, right? I mean, you could do all this stuff yourself. You don't need Nathan to show up with zero credentials and teach you guys everything. I mean, give me a break. Give me a break. So was there a second part to that question, Amy? So the Hebrew for NASA was the second part. The eight in formula is wrong was the first part. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mark was going to tell everyone how many cur inches of curve there are per mile. Uh, you want to go ahead and do that, Mark? Yeah, sure. The formulator for no, the, no, not the, the formula, Mark. I hey, equals the uh, excuse me, Nathan. Just I didn't ask up. for the formula. Yeah, yeah, shut what, up. How much does um, Earth? Yep, shut up. Yeah, yeah. The question Nathan, was for me, so you don't even have to. Can talk. I talk, or is that something that no, Nathan you, you doesn't really don't. have? So, happened. if you're not going to give me yeah, a measurement, so, well, I don't yeah, want yeah. A so Nathan's because, just yeah. Well, because because you asked the question, I'm going to let Mark respond, but then Nathan, you get the final word on whatever he says. So the, the formula is A equals the square root of R plus H, where R is the Earth's radius and H is the height above sea level, squared minus R squared. So when he's sort of saying, hey, what, what should you see? It depends on your um, height, basically. So this sort of very, very simplistic, oh, well, you should see this much it, you know, there's a number of assumptions of which may be completely faulty in that calculation. Um, so the formula is eight equals the square root of um, R plus H squared minus R squared. How much over one mile does Earth curve, Mark? Depends on your height. Uh, if you're at sea level and you have zero observer height. And on that note, he gets the last word. So within uh, four... Wait, Amy, Mark was going to give me the Earth curve. If you want him to, it was well, your then, question. If you want him to respond, then it's the square root of r squared minus r squared. Uh, how much drop tangent to your feet in inches or feet, Mark? Go ahead, give it to yeah, me. Yeah, so so you can't really if if you're at zero height, if you cannot see a thing because you're basically against the ground, is what you're talking about. You can't see anything, Nathan. You cannot see anything. Okay, Try it yourself. Great. Put a, put a camera on the ground and see how many miles you can see, Nathan. Go hey, for Amy, it. Do you see Enjoy my that, mate. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I think I get. Uh, uh, who gets the last word here? Nathan does. That's okay. I, yeah, I do. So shut up. Yeah, uh, go for high it. height zero feet target <laughs> distance one mile. This is the Earth Curve Calculator website, Mark. So I know you're confused about how much curve there should be on a globe, but if you go to the Earth Curve Calculator website, Mark. You could be educated. You don't need to learn from Flat Earther Nathan Thompson what your globe religion is. Now, your globe religion states at one mile target distance and zero feet, you wouldn't see nothing, Mark. There would be a target hidden height of 0.666. Boy, isn't that interesting? 666 feet, okay? Which, if you do the math, Mark, I know Flat Earthers can't do math, but I figured this one out, is eight inches, okay? So when all the globers like this doofus in the comments say, oh, Nate doesn't know how much earth should curve. You need to go learn your own religion. Your own religion says how much it should curve. And that's exactly what I said. Eight inches. 
per mile. What's the horizon compared. difference? Shut up, What's Mark. The horizon You're done. Distance? You're done. What's the horizon You're done. distance? The horizon You're distance done. is zero, You're by done, the way, people. Marky. It's zero. See you later, I'm pulling Marky. Your boat apart. And on that, we got It's a... zero. <laughs> the horizon distance is zero. We got a question <laughs> for you, Mark, or more of a comment. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, $2 super chat from Question yeah. the Answers. Only a fool still ridicules flat earth. It's flat. Uh, sure. I mean, um, that's sort of, you can say that. Uh, we've got a mass of evidence that the earth is a globe. People have thought the earth is a globe from ancient Greek days because they managed to figure out with a surprising level of accuracy, actually. So, um, yeah, we, we've believed that the earth has been a globe. The Catholic Church, a lot of people like to say, hey, the, the Christians believed it was flat. No, they didn't. They knew it was a globe all, all the way through. Um, as I said, the, the start of the flat earth movement was 1890-something. It, it, it's a relatively new phenomenon um, and um, really doesn't have much traction because there's absolutely no evidence for it, just sort of, you know, these, these conspiracy theories and these well, how does this work when they don't understand how it works? Like Nathan obviously didn't understand how that earth calculator works because he plugged in zero expecting to get a different number and he got a horizon distance of zero, which is hilarious. Like it's so funny. I didn't ask um, you where the horizon was. This is my time. This is my time, Nathan. Thank you very much, mate. Drop. Thank you very much. Thank you for your blatant bleating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the sort of, he doesn't understand how these things work. So it's sort of just a misunderstanding of, physics of science of all the things that we have demonstrated to be true and then somebody with no credentials and no way of evaluating whether something is true or false goes to a curve calculator puts in zero expecting to get you know a certain distance and gets zero which is exactly what i said I um so that, that was funny though and that, so you're about no, no to the have... horizon distance was zero you can, you can i didn't wind ask up you what the horizon, the distance, horizon was, distance will be that zero. wasn't what we were yeah, talking about yeah so this about, is this mark. is actually my time so um, i didn't the horizon ask you what the horizon zero. distance was mark i asked you how much drop we would see because you said eight inches no you drop. said how far how far you should see that's what no, you i said so... how much drop should there be tangent to your feet that's exactly what i said and you didn't have an answer that's exactly what i said yeah sure and so uh, um, I think I get the last last one on sure. that one. Sure. Well, Thanks. I'll let you have the, yep. the last say on that because the next one is going to be for Nathan anyway. But I do want to just send a lot of love. We're getting a ton of Super Chats. We're going to go into a little bit of overtime because I want to try and get all of your Super Chats in. But in uh, 10 or 15 minutes... We are going to be closing up the gates on Super Chats because we value our interlocutors' time and we want to uh, let them get out in a reasonable... Still going to read everything that I have. We are, enjoy the enthusiasm and I want to really thank all of you out there in the inner tubes. But, uh, da 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 Nathan... Um, can I finish off, like, sort of give the last response because Nathan sort of jumped in and the question or if comment was If you had something directly on your mind, say yeah. it, and then I'm going to hand it back. Yeah, to sure. Nathan. Okay, so this is this is sort of what I was saying. So, so Nathan's saying how far can we expect the drop to happen over a certain distance, and it all depends on the height. And what I said is if you put the height at zero, you'll be able to see zero because that's the way the calculations work. And then he puts it in, gets zero, and tries to say, hey, well, I said something else. No, what I'm pointing out is that simplifying it down to an amount per distance isn't a good representative of how far you should be able to see because as the as the person before pointed out Nathan constantly misrepresents the formula to find the cur uh, curvature of the earth so he just misrepresents it somebody gives him the right one he continues to misrepresent it then then he puts it into a calculator gets exactly the answer that we expect and then claims no that's what he never asked well done Nathan. and that's I will right. hand it over to you Nathan but you also seem to have no 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 I have there. the last word well I it's a new word. it's a new question for him I oh, okay you. gotcha okay uh yeah. Nathan Please debate T-Jump 1v1. I need that. From JM for $2. Yeah, I've debated him a ton of times. And uh, I asked you how much curve we should see tangent to our feet. Okay, so how much drop tangent to our feet? And the drop was 8 inches. So when people comment, Nathan's 8 inches is wrong. He doesn't know what he's talking about. It says 8 inches on the Earth curve calculator. So there you go, Amy. Next question. 
Thank you, and I will say we always love T-Jump on Modern Day Debate, as well as Mark and Nathan. We love our interlocutors, and once again, I'll keep saying it, if you have a favorite interlocutor, atheist, theist, liberal, conservative, doesn't matter, globe or flat, send them to James Coons, to myself, Sideshow, Hannah, uh, all of the lovely mods out there. We will figure out a way to get them on here. Um, okay. Earth, first space later, Nathan knows the Selenian destroys heliocentrism. Uh, that is S E L E N E L I O N. The Selenelion. Selenelion. It's called Thank on the you. globe Earth model the impossible eclipse because it wouldn't happen on a globe. So uh, also eclipses are claimed to be Earth's shadow. Some of them, lunar eclipses, are claimed to be Earth's shadow on the moon. But the lunar eclipses are glowing red, ladies and gentlemen. Now, tell me when you've ever seen a shadow glowing red. And here's a funny thing. Globers will walk right into this argument. They'll say, oh, but it's being refracted by the Earth's atmosphere. And it's it's because of the weather. Well, you got a problem with that one, Globeheads, because now you got to predict the weather three, four months, years in advance for your lunar eclipse. And let me tell you what, that ain't happening. So you got a problem there. If it's refraction, big problem. But yeah, doesn't look like a shadow at all. It's glowing red. The moon is self-illuminating. Its light is cold. It's wet. It's moist. Unlike the sunlight, which is hot, dry. And uh, actually, the sun's light's preserving. The moonlight is putrefying. So they are yin and yang. That's where the symbol yin and yang comes from, the sun, which is round, and the moon, which is round, orbiting around the flat earth. It's one of the oldest symbols in the book. Five dollars. Can I just add one thing quickly? Yes, you I just can. want to add one thing no, real quickly. Please. The, no, um, the, the reason why it's red is because it's the sunlight passing horizontally through the atmosphere. It's the same effect, actually, that gives the sunset and sunrise the red color. Um, which, you know, flat earthers can't seem to explain, but it can be by passing through a lot of atmosphere on a horizontal sort of when it goes down behind the uh, earth, um, when it passes through a lot of atmosphere, um, uh, 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 when it's going below the horizon, it, it takes on a red colour and that's exactly what is uh, reflected onto the uh, moon. Yeah, I'll take that last word. Yeah, so it's absolutely. based on atmospheric conditions. You can't predict atmospheric conditions six months, a year in advance. So, and they actually admit they use the sorrow cycle to predict eclipses. The comment was about the Selenelion eclipse, which is deemed the impossible eclipse on the globe model. Just type in the impossible eclipse. They're going to start talking about Selenelion eclipses, where the shadow comes from the wrong direction, comes from the bottom up when it sh should come from the top down. Nothing makes sense on the globe model, but don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. We have experts at NASA that gave us space blankies and air scrubbers so we can believe everything they say. $5 super chat from Tim Pryor. When you have to confirm to yourself you're winning, more than likely you're not. And it's cute you still think South is down. That's not a question. Thank you so very much, uh, Tim Pryor, for your super chat. And moving to Bitter Truth for $5. Nathan, if you send out to the moon and you see Earth is a globe, will you still believe Earth is flat? Yeah, I call this the Snoop Dogg fallacy. This is this idea that to figure out where we live or what Earth is, we need to get high. Uh, you don't need to get high to see that the Earth is a globe. You could test Earth's curve from the surface. It should curve eight inches per mile squared in all directions. I just clearly showed that on the Earth Curve calculator. So you learn something new every day, Globers, and it's my pleasure to teach you guys. It really is. Thank you for your super chat and response and a $2 super chat from Minecraft Player. I didn't watch, but I like the shape of Mark's head. Thank you for the super chat. $5 from Tim Pryor. It's a globe. <laughs> it's globe. It's, Literal globe head. <laughs> it's funny how Nathan still thinks it's NASA that takes our money when they get their money from the government and have to have to do what they say with it. That's a good point. I wanted to bring this up because Mark said that NASA is accountable to the government. 
Now, I don't know if you know this, Mark, but NASA is the government. So it's like basically uh, checking and balancing yourself, which cops love to do this. Cops are like, oh, well, we have uh, some guy who's misbehaving. We're going to look right into it. Don't worry. Us cops are going to judge the other cops and make sure that we're all doing the right thing. OK, so NASA being accountable to the government is basically Mark's telling you guys, NASA is accountable to NASA. Good times, dude. Good stuff. Excellent. Brilliant, bro. $9 super chat from Coffee Mom. Mark, can you answer my previous questions on alternatives to internet tech-based on a globe model Nathan didn't want to? And the... Uh, what was that previous question? Previous internet. question yeah. from Coffee Mom for $5. Nathan, do you have an alternate explanation for how you are using the internet for this debate to replace the science and engineering based on a globe? Uh, Amy, I yeah. did answer that question. I said towers, high altitude balloons, they could have sure. surveillance drones. So well, just so in know, fact, what I'll, I'll, the yeah, way I'll Amy separate didn't this say out... That. So the way, it's because you were name checked, Nathan, the way I'll handle this out, Mark have a response, Nathan sure. have one, and then Mark will finish it. Yeah, so the contributions to our, our technology from NASA, I mean, they've worked on uh, fiber optic sensors, they've worked on all of those things. And what we're doing is we're basically, um, we're basically sort of bringing everybody together to work on these technologies to progress them as much as possible. So NASA does contribute to the internet, especially, of course, satellite internet. Um, um, there, there are places in Australia, and, and I have worked on um, alignment for satellite dishes myself uh, in Australian telecommunications. There are places that would not have any internet connection if they do not have satellite. Same is true for something we have Foxtel. I'm not sure if you guys still have that. Uh, it's kind of a bit out phased, but there are places where they still do use satellite communications to beam down entertainment. Um, all of this would not work on, on Nathan's flat earth. If there's no satellites, it would not work. GPS wouldn't work. There's a lot of stuff that just would not work without um, um, Nathan's. Uh, why am I looking at a share screen right now? I don't understand. Uh, is someone sharing their screen over the top of me? I don't understand why, because I'm sort of currently talking. You can talk while I share images on a screen, Mark. Yeah, I don't think that's fair, Nathan. At the same time, too? I don't think that's fair, Nathan. It's basically just sort of you showing pictures while I'm trying to talk. It's it's kind of pretty rude, actually. These Could you pictures. share your this screen is... when it's your time, please? Yeah, no Nathan. problem. But I can also share it when it's your time, like I'm doing right well, now. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can, I share, can I share my screen when it's your time? If you want to, yeah, and I'm not currently okay. sharing something. Yeah, no problem, bro. Go ahead. No, no, no. When you're talking, I'll share my screen, if that's okay. Go ahead. If it's okay. relevant to the debate um, and what we're talking about, which this is. Yeah, so um, basically um, they, they don't have a technology to replace um, satellite communications <laughs> and the kind of communications that are like this. Um, yeah, so it, it's really up to Nathan to show that um, feasibly um, we can sort of produce the same results with flat earth technology, which flat earth technology doesn't exist. So, you know, and, uh, and I will, uh, you were already screen sharing and I will, I'm going to let that and then uh, future will go back and forth. Uh, but it was, it's already right now Nathan's turn because Mark just had his and then Mark will have the final word. But Nathan, yep. uh, Mark was yeah, but I'll, I'll be I'll be sharing my screen for this one. Actually, that's true. In uh, fact, and we'll, we'll I have it. something to share right now, Mark. It's sure. tough. You but shared your screen. You shared your screen while I was talking. You didn't talking. have anything to share. To share you I do so, have stuff to. So because share. that I do was have stuff to share. That was the no, first I, time it happened, and so we'll just call that a freebie for both sides. But then moving forward, whoever is talking will be the person who gets to share screen. Okay, so I want to share my screen now. She just said we're not doing that, doofus. Well, uh, well it, technically speaking, it is your turn right now, Nathan. So you, you but it was it this. was my turn, and he shared his so, screen. Hey, why are you talking? Me. It's but not Mark, your turn. Mark, you will be able to have the final word, and I will okay. switch to your screen share when he okay. has done his statement. Great. Mark's super confused on how we don't have, like, metal boxes floating 18,000 miles an hour in a vacuum of nothing and how Flat Earth would explain that. Well, go ahead. 
Let's take a look, maybe just 30 seconds, 45 seconds at this video. A manufacturing system that can manufacture many, many of these balloons. We're gonna to need to have a mission control system that can keep track of the balloons. We're gonna to need to have an operations team that can launch these balloons and then recover them when they're ready to come down. So each piece of the process got to be bigger. They had to scale up. It was pretty challenging getting the balloons to be more durable and more long. So basically what he's saying is now we've gotten to the point where we can make thousands of these balloons a day. And Mark's over here like, well, how could we get signals from the sky if they're not in space? It's ridiculous, bro. You think you're going to spend billions of dollars on satellites in space when they can put one of these up for twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000? You think that's monetarily feasible? It's ridiculous. And that's why all the cartoons or satellites in space are cartoons because they're not real. You have a hocus pocus booga booga fairy tale religion, Mark. And I demolished it in this debate. Thank you. And then it is up to you for the final say, Mark. Thank you, and I'll share my screen. Um, the reason why that Nathan has to sort of say, oh, I demolished and I destroyed is because his arguments have been so poor. My arguments stand on their own merits. I will support them. This is the kind of thing that we're talking about, uh, satellite communications. This is probably, uh, this one is probably a ground station at, um, um, I, I don't know actually know where it is, but it does look like uh, there's one at Ghana. There, there are tons of these that point uh, either up or straight up. They do not focus balloons. Um, let's have a look at, at Nathan's project and see who's actually ranting incoherently. There's how Google shut down the Loon Helium balloon project, the exact project we were just shown. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Why did it fail? Um, it failed. Um, there's a difference between potentialization and actualization. Its execution was less than ideal for long-term sustainable business. It basically did not work, could not work. It was not feasible to do so because it was too expensive. It was shut down. Now, I'm saying uh, you possibly could make it work if you wanted to spend way too much money on something that is inferior to satellites. But, you know, we've got all of this equipment to do satellites and it does work. I don't know why um, Nathan's fever dream of putting balloons up. You know, which balloon is this pointed in? It, it's a balloon directly above, is it? It's uh, very, very strange of Nathan to sort of claim this. Um, this one is obviously targeting some sort of balloon straight up. No, these yep. are targeting satellites. They're not targeting balloons. Um, there's no reason why you would need a dish of this size to target a balloon. There's, there's absolutely no way. But if you're targeting a satellite, which is out of atmosphere, absolutely you do. 100% you do. Um, so that is the actual science behind um, satellite internet been around for ages. I've worked with it. I've talked to technicians working with it. I've gotten coordinates and aligned dishes or, or rather giving it to the technicians to align dishes with. It's a thing. And so, you know, sort of Nathan puts up balloons of a project that failed um, to sort of say, hey, it's balloons. Um, wow. <laughs> well done, Nathan. Well done. And on that note, $5 from Tim Pryor. But they didn't silence all the other Flat Earth channels, did they, Nathan? Uh, no, yeah, they didn't. Actually, they do. Uh, they shadow ban them. They, they admitted to the Senate that YouTube is censoring Flat Earth. So if you think that they just deleted my channel and all the other Flat Earthers are just willy-nilly, their videos are all getting promoted, you are smoking crack. And a $2 super chat from Sharik. Nathan, what is your educational background? Uh, I memorized pi up to 300 digits and I can write mirror image left-handed. I taught myself. $5 super chat from Rad Crab. Nathan, what would be the actual purpose for NASA lying? What are oh. they trying to hide and why? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, like I said earlier in my opening, I'm not Miss Cleo. I don't have a crystal ball. You want me to divine their motives for stealing $50 million a day from taxpayers? Well, let's start with the obvious. They get $50 million a day from taxpayers. And Mark over here will be like, oh, that's nothing compared to defense spending and stuff. Uh, it's all stolen money. Okay. So the fact that you're like, oh, they steal 50 million and compared to what they use for defense with the money they steal, it's minuscule. No, $50 million a day, Mark, is a ton of money, a ton of money. And when it comes in every single day, that starts to add up. 
So for you to be like, well, flat earthers don't do anything. They haven't invented space blankets and they haven't invented air scrubbers. Okay, well, try giving me $50 million a day for 50 years and see what I come up with. Okay, probably be pretty cool. So thanks for the question. Appreciate it. $5 super chat from upside down guy. Does Nathan still chase kids around during recess? Does Mark acknowledge that there is no proof that the sun orbits the Earth and is only a belief? Nathan, I think you were name check first. Yeah, no, I still chase kids at school grounds all the time. I'm only blocked from 80 schools in uh, South Carolina. So other than that, I can approach schools and talk to children about the reality of where we live anywhere. Yeah. Who'd have thunk? It's America, free country. Kind of weird, huh? And then Mark? Uh, yeah, that's kind of scary and unsettling. I don't know why you're hanging around schools at all, but I probably wouldn't as, as a grown man. Um, so, yeah, no, the, the Earth, uh, the sun doesn't go around the Earth. I, I acknowledge there's no evidence for the sun going around the Earth. Um, it's more the Earth goes around the sun, opposite way around. I'm not sure if that was sort of intentional, but... Um, yeah, I, I acknowledge that there's no evidence that the sun goes around the Earth. Amy, I think you got to read that question again. I don't think Mark got it. Sure. Okay, maybe it, it was the was, other way around. Does Mark acknowledge that there is no proof that the sun orbits the Earth and is only a belief? Sorry, who didn't read it? Who didn't read okay, it? Sorry. I think that who person in the comment Sorry? actually misspoke. What they meant to say was that there's no proof. The well, Earth I've is. answered it as it was asked. So maybe it Fair was enough. you that yeah. misheard it, Nathan. Fair so enough. well done on that. Maybe and you should upside talk. down, guy, if it was a uh, mistake, just tell me in chat and I will read sure, it. Sure, sure. Uh, but yes, moving along, bitter truth. To, for ten dollars, Nathan, the Apollo Eleven lunar laser ranging retro reflector array placed by Neil Armstrong. You even don't know now if you shoot a laser at the moon will reflect back just because of the retro reflector. Hilarious. Uh, they were that. getting reflections back and pinging the moon in the early 60s before anyone ever faked going to the moon. So that's a cool story, but you need to look into it a little bit deeper. Thank you for your question, Bear Truth, and your answer, Nathan. And then a $2 super chat from Jay Vansicle. If gravity is real, would planes account for curve? Is that two? I am not sure. Anyone want to take a shot? Yeah, that's a big in the question fallacy because you're assuming that there is curve and then asking, would airplanes account for it? Well, the FAA on their target generation facility states that pilots are trained on flat earth software over a non-rotating earth and they negate a gravity vector. Now, if gravity was getting stronger and stronger exponentially, according to Glober's formulas, which they love formulas, so it's exponentially stronger the closer you get to Earth, the airplanes and pilots would need to know about that. But the FAA just says, hey, we'll just negate the gravity vector altogether. That's interesting, right? Yeah, so we don't know who it's for, so I'll, I'll sort of jump in as well because I think it was for me. Uh, well, anyway, it could be either really. But basically, um, they do account for gravity, obviously, because there is a downward force. They just, once they get up to speed, the lateral speed essentially n negates gravity because if you are travelling at speed, gr you know, gravity has a less impact on you. Um, they train, assuming a flat, flat Earth, and they do account for curvature. What they do is they use an altimeter to keep the right, altitude and therefore if if there's a curve and around the curve is the same altitude then keeping the same altitude will account for that curve it's a very simple premise so jay is saying so i'm going to let him have a last response that it was for nathan so if gravity oh, okay. is real would planes account for curve yeah if the earth was a ball airplanes would account for curve that's for sure and all right, $2 super chat coming in from Bitter Truth. Nathan, please write a book to get Nobel Peace Prize, lol. Wow, that was so funny. I laughed so hard I fell off my dinosaur. That was kind of funny. 
$2 super chat from Jesse L. Negative 200 to plus 200 degrees on lunar moon land there worked flawless. <laughs> that all right. Thank you so very much, Jesse L, for the love. We're sending that love right back. Earth first space later for $5. Nathan, explain a selenellium. I still can't say selenellium. Selenellium. Thank it you. took me like a week to get Amy, and I looked at it every day. So it's a hard one. Uh, he wants me to explain it. Uh, selenellion eclipse. Yeah, that's when the sun and moon are both visible at the same time during an eclipse, when globe heads will tell you the Earth is in the middle of both of those two objects. Now, if you're on a ball, and the sun's on one side, and the earth is casting a shadow on the moon on the completely other side, you wouldn't have the sun and moon both visible to a single observer during a lunar eclipse. Great super chat, Earth First Space Later. You are a legend. Uh, well, to be fair, I think he asked you to explain it on a flat earth, Nathan. You think? Did he? Yeah, I do. Yeah, well, we'll read the question again if you want. Yeah, go ahead. It just says, Nathan, explain it, though, if he oh. does mean with that, send it in chat, and I'll add that asterisk, uh, because we're sending love to everybody who sends love to us, but moving forward, $10 from Tim Pryor, about 8 billion people on this planet looking outside right now don't see any cars. According to Nathan's logic, cars must not exist since we can't see satellites all the time. Yep. Yep. Cars don't exist, according to my logic. Good call. Well, I can see one in the background, so. <laughs> like... Five dollars. Well, that's, that's artifacting, Mark. It's it's CGI. Real. Okay. <laughs> Five dollar super chat from Brad. Brad Anderson. Nathan, as a boat captain, how can I navigate a flat Earth with our latitude longitude? system when longitude coverage is again below the equator uh you know i haven't done too much celestial navigating myself but i know that south of the equator it's more difficult because you can't see polaris which the fact we have a polaris pole star that lined up through a hole into georgia guidestones for 40 years when globers say we're moving around in ever expanding space and everything's attracted to it at breakneck speeds i mean the sun's moving half a million miles an hour on the globe model and they erected stones in georgia that had a hole pointing towards polaris for 40 years and i filmed it it's on my youtube channel so that's that's pretty interesting so that's what uh, i got well, the, pole st the pole star of the south pole is um alpha pictolus i think it's not stationary it's not analogous to polaris five dollars from Tim Pryor, Nathan, Shanks, thanks for showing again why flat earthers mean nothing in the real world and why you depend on us for technology. Yeah, I don't, I don't depend on you guys for anything. You guys don't do anything. You guys give $50 million a day to NASA so they can make space blankets and air scrubbers and think that that's worth $50 million a day. Come on, guys. Let's, let's be real. You're not doing that. You didn't invent space blankets, and you didn't invent the air scrubber. You didn't do anything. Mark, why... Oh, from Patty Q for $5. Mark, why... What do you think about Operation Paperclip? Nathan, you're doing yourself a disservice by being condescending. Yeah, so Operation Paperclip was basically um, in the very last days of World War II, um, the American forces captured um, some camps with a lot, uh, sort of 1,600 from memory, um, scientists and technicians from um, the German side. Now, um, instead of what they would have had to do, do because they were under a treaty with Russia is to give up that area back to Russia and Russia would have essentially gotten all of those scientists. So instead they decided to bring them with them. The FBI did a lot of checking and they basically sorted out who was um, a, a loyal uh, Nazi and who was actually just a German that um, 
or basically was just working because that's what their country demanded from them. So there were people that were sent back to Germany because the, they decided, no, we cannot have these people working in our country. There were people that were sent to South America because of exactly the same reason. So they basically took the, the, the best minds that um, were acceptable to the people of America. Um, Werner von Braun was definitely one of them. I have mixed feelings about this. Um, I probably would have liked to see more punishment for them. I think that working on behalf of the United States, who they, they sort of contributed fighting against, is a punishment that, um, or, you know, is something that sort of redeemed them. However, I'm not sure... While practical, I'm not sure it was a moral thing to do. However, this led to the Cold War and America having rocket superiority through the Cold War. So it and and they worked with a lot of Jewish people, Jewish directors of NASA. Silverstein, who directed NASA, had a famous uh, friendship with von Braun. Um, it led to currently where the technological superiority of the US is. So practically it was a good idea. Morally, I would have liked to see more punishment for them. And thank you for that super chat and response. And then, oh, wait, uh, Nathan, you're doing yourself a disservice by being condescending. Yeah, well, I believe I don't believe in organizations that brought over 1,600 Nazis and they tell you you live on a ball in space, which you could verify yourself with a high power zoom camera or telescope, and it's objectively, provably false. Two dollar super chat from Da Freak. Has Nathan ever worked or contracted for the government? No, I don't think I have. Actually, I did do a catering event that Donald Rumsfeld was at, and uh, I stole his little name tag thing. Like they have names where everyone's going to sit down, and they had a little name tag. That's about the closest I've got to working for the government. Ah, uh, conspiracy. He's a government agent. You heard it here first, folks. $10 super chat from Tim Pryor. Another lie by Nathan. You have cameras, not telescopes. Not once have you used a telescope to focus in on planets. Let me say this again. Cameras are not telescopes. This is why we laugh. Uh, yeah, I could prove that's wrong in about 10 seconds. Hold on one second. Uh, here's me with my dad, who's a flat earther, and there's a telescope that we use to look at planets. Also, I was at Lake Pontchartrain doing observations because I'm more concerned with it if Ursa globe and curves than looking at planets in the sky. So uh, I use telescopes all the time. I don't, I don't know what globe heads are talking about. It's like they just like have this idea in their head that like, and they, oh, here it is. So that's uh, Lake Pontchartrain. Those are uh, telescopes. Yeah, right there next to me. So nice try, Globehead, but you're wrong again. Sucks to suck. $2, $5 super chat from Neon Soul. One, eight inches per mile squared is a parabola education doesn't hurt two nathan trusts nasa as soon as it fits his narrative so nasa is trustworthy mark wins yeah uh eight inches per mile squared i just showed is a parabola i just showed you the earth curve calculator amy let's go ahead and share the screen again uh and we'll show them that when you type into the Earth curve calculator, now this is not a parabola Earth, this is allegedly a globe Earth, ladies and gentlemen. You type in the target distance one mile, it gives you eight inches, 0.666 feet. Uh, so there, then you need to contact the Earth curve calculator website and tell them, hey dude, it's a parabola. And, and then here's the problem. Even if it is a parabola, parabola, I've got the AutoCAD, the Sagita, and the Pythagorean theorem showing that eight inches per mile squared is what Earth would curve up to about a thousand miles. They're all accurate. They're all the same. So if you're doing observations beyond a thousand miles, the Earth's definitely flat. But also, then you could 
uh, worry about the formula, but eight inches works for Sajida. It works for AutoCAD, works for Pythagorean theorem. It works for the globe tards that wrote this earth curve calculator website. So you need to figure out your own religion and then figure out that it's fake and not true. Then we can talk. Okay. Thank you. $10 super chat from bitter truth. Nathan, I worked as chief engineer on a cargo. My question, if I travel all the way east, I will be able, will I be able onto the, hold on. I'll read it the, the regular way, then I'll, I'll reach it. Nathan, I worked as a chief engineer on a cargo. My question, if I travel all the way east, I will be back on the same place where I start traveling. This telling me Earth is globe. Can you explain flat Earth? So he's saying if you if you travel east and get back to that proves you're on a ball. Well, the Glover obviously is that 2015 argument hasn't spent a lick of time researching flat Earth because on a flat Earth, the compass points towards polar center and heading east or west in one direction, just east or west, is a circle. Now, I don't know if you know this, but you can go in a circle on a flat Earth, too. For example... When I walk my dog after this debate, we're going to go in a circle around my neighborhood. I'm going to circumnavigate my neighborhood. Now, is my neighborhood a ball? This Glover would say, yes, definitely proof you're on a ball. The problem is my neighborhood's not a ball and you're just a silly globe head. Thank you. And another... $5 super chat coming in from Bitter Truth. Flat Earth because it's in a holy book. But if it was globe, Nathan will be debating Earth is globe, Mark. Name checked both I of agree. you. So in the end, you both get yeah. something. Uh, yeah, I think Mark, so, yeah. Mark kept bringing up the Bible, not me. All I mentioned was that the Hebrew word for deceive is NASA. Okay? None of my arguments are... Hey, the flat the Bible is in a flat earth book. So so the earth is flat. Is that what we're talking about? The topic of the debate is is NASA trustworthy trustworthy? And nowhere was I like, oh well, they're definitely not trustworthy because of the Bible. Like you guys need to clean the wax out of your ears. You're obviously not even can do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Well, you were the one that brought up the Bible. So, you know, I think it's fair that that you know, we do discuss your vested interest in the Bible being correct. I was a global um, so, and a Christian so, for 10 um, years, Mark. Yeah, yeah. So, so the whole... Well, I was and a global and a of, Christian for 10 years. This is sort of the kind Possible. of, you know, condescension that people are talking about in their super chats. This is exactly what they're sort of outlining. Oh, appeal to emotion. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you did, you did bring up the Bible. I think it's only fair that we sort of examine your religious bias. You brought up the Bible more than I did, Mark. Go count them. Go and count the number of times you, brought it up you first. talked about my religious beliefs, and now I have all this. I talked about. I didn't talk about the Bible at all. I said, in the in the Garden of Eden, the word "deceive" means NASA, and that was it. And then I moved on. And you're like, "Well, oh, that's Nathan's whole argument. Is he just believes in the Bible? No, the Bible says don't believe in the Bible. It says test all things and hold fast to that which is true." If you guys yeah, actually so read the you Bible, up the Bible, you would know that. Yeah. The Bible doesn't say yeah. blindly believe everything the Bible says because it's a holy book. The Bible actually says test and verify. Now, reluctantly, yeah, I went. I, I think it's fair that if you bring up the Bible, we, we get to discuss it. I think that's fair. And sort of so you used a quote out of the Bible to back up your arguments. So I think it's fair that I get to examine that your arguments are in part based upon what the Bible says. And so I want to send love out into the internet and shadow sphere. This is gonna be the final warning. If you want your super chat read, now is the time to do so. Uh, we are going to finish up the last few and then send love to both of our interlocutors. But. Indie Tigers sci-fi review for twenty dollars. We appreciate the support. I did celestial navigation, Nathan. The constellations are generally moving with us, so they stay together for thousands of years. And yeah, it is a cool story, bro, that I've done something very few humans have done. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the entire universe that we see is just locked in motion with the Earth as we travel through the infinite galaxy of space. That's 
a cool story, Glover. But you know what? Works just fine on a flat earth, too, with fixed stars in the firmament that have a cyclical nature. So. $2 super chat from Twad Wazzle. Mark, is the horizon geometric? Is the horizon geometric? Yeah, is the horizon the physical curve of the Earth, Mark? Well, no, the, the horizon is an apparent thing. It depends on whether you're talking about the geometric horizon or the apparent horizon. So bones don't just disappear over the curve, Mark? Is that what you're saying? Uh, this is my question, Nathan. I was just looking for a little clarification, yeah. not to mention you take the opportunity to speak yeah. every time I get a question, so I should be able to do it every once in a while too. Mark, you big crybaby. <laughs> wow yeah so i i would probably get the last word because nathan um is really upset and sort of having a bit of a tanty over there tantrum uh it was yeah, technically okay. your question so you do get the yeah yeah so yeah they do vanish over the edge of the horizon but you, if you're talking about whether the line is the physical line that we see or whether refraction is causing the horizon to be in a different place that is two different horizons we have an apparent horizon we have a geometric horizon so um sometimes they are in the same place if no fraction is going on um but yeah boats do vanish over the horizon and we can show that and um, unfortunately flat earth has absolutely no way to explain that besides some sort of magic physics that the, they have um where where things vanish from the bottom up because reasons i guess so we um, have magic yeah. physics but you claim two horizons you freaking goofball bro <laughs> there's not two horizons there's just one horizon it's the one that we see, the apparent conjunction of the sky and the earth. And, then and Mark, you just admitted it's not earth curve. So thank you. Sense. Boats don't disappear over the curve of the earth. Mark is somewhat honest. Yeah, so what what um, this guy is doing is basically just sort of trying to conflate things. And, you know, it's an ambiguous question about whether um, the horizon is an apparent horizon. Um, I think throwing the word in geometric sort of suggests that it is um, the horizon of the earth. But unfortunately, Nathan wants to sort of bray and, you know, puff his chest. And that's cool. That's cool. He can do that. Um, but boats still do vanish over the horizon. We see that every day. We have footage of that. Um, the, the magic physics that they're using is that basically that somehow light from the bottom doesn't get to you, whereas light from the top does. And so they vanish from the bottom up, which you know, goes against all physics we know. And for some reason, the flat earth that's been around for over 100 years can't demonstrate this. They just basically assert it and rely on their, their magic and their stuff to, for it to happen. Well, we know why it happens and it's because the earth is uh, round and it has a horizon that boats do vanish over. Thank you for those answers. And then $10 super chat from Tim Pryor. I'll do a debate with Nathan if he can prove flat earth without mentioning the globe and debunk every single piece of evidence that we have who wants to bet that he can't well that was a boring question next and i will say tim that if you reach out to us and you uh have a debate topic and you have an interlocutor in mind that always helps we always love to set that up and have some fun uh and another does Tim Fryer, five dollars. Nathan, how far should we see on flat Earth? How far, how far, how far? Yeah, you have nothing, you have nothing. Uh, yeah, well, we should see, uh, it depends on atmospheric conditions. The long, <laughs> the world. Excuse me, Mark, it's my turn. Can you go on mute, it's my turn. Um, we see, what we see, how far we see, the Earth is flat. So how far should we see on a flat earth? Go outside, however far you can see, that's how far you can see on a flat earth. I don't know how much more difficult that needs to be. Real scientific. Simple yeah. stuff, guys. It's simple stuff. Super What's simple. What's the equation the world, for that, Nathan? The world record photograph. Hey, Mark, you want to super chat a question? Go ahead and type it in, okay? You're done no, talking. You can have the last word. You can have the last word. You're done talking to me. You're done asking me questions. Two dollars. No, no, no. So you can have the last. No, Nathan needs the last word because I asked him to provide the equation, so he gets the last word. Yeah, world record photo, Bar de Crens. It's a mountain two hundred and thirty miles away. It should be under fifty thousand feet of Earth curve. Fortunately for me, in this debate, there's no such thing as Earth curve, so we can see the mountain, and it is the world record photograph. 
So don't trust NASA. Five dollar super chat from Tim Pryor. <laughs> the one thing Nathan was right about all night is that one super chat wasn't a question; it was a statement. Congratulations. I rule. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Nathan. Two dollars from Rad Crab. Just send in love. Saw uh, your comment and uh, yeah, send in love right back. And then Famo for <gasps> unrelated, but you're sending us love. Uh, possibly a different debate. But was Building Seven a controlled demolition? That uh, po hey, we love doing all sorts of debates. So that may be up for uh, a, a possible in the future. And then <laughs> Tim Pryor. Wait, I want to answer that. It was not a controlled, it was an uncontrolled demolition. World Trade Center 7 blew itself up. So there you go. And okay. Moving forward. Thank you, Famio, for the question and Nathan for the response. And then $5 super chat from Tim Pryor. Really, Nathan, if they were afraid of you guys spilling the truth, then no Flat Earth channel would exist. Your logic is flawed yeah that's great just no flatter channel would ever exist brilliant brilliant argument good times five dollars from tim Pryor, literally bragging about being banned from schools do i really need to say anything else yeah standing up for the truth and teaching kids the truth is a badge of honor i mean i don't know what else to tell you people so you guys think it's bad? That's fine. Cry me a river. I don't care. Five dollars from Brad Anderson. Clarify. Longitude lines starts at north, spreads until reaching equator, then comes back together at south. Lat slash long does not need celestial nav. Yeah, it doesn't need celestial nav. Uh, but that's one way to figure out your latitude is by looking at Polaris. That's all I was saying earlier. So, $2 from Tim Pryor. Nathan, tell us where the big numbers touched you. Say big numbers all you want doesn't mean anything. This is why you're a tiny percent of the world's population. That guy's triggered. Four dollars from Brad Anderson, and thank you, Tim and Nathan, for your responses. Brad says more clarity. Longitude lines would necessarily need to keep spreading apart when continuing south. Mark, can you please elaborate to Nathan? Yes. Yeah, so what what you'd have is because the uh, radius of this this disc that Nathan's proposing, the radius of the outer um, latitude lines is is wider and wider and wider we would find a mass disparity between say a latitudinal line in the center um, and uh, the latitudinal line at the south pole the latitudinal line at the south pole which for nathan is every point around the edge of that disc the the, the latitudinal lines would be massive like just the size of the disc but what we don't find that what we find is that sort of you know, a, a um, boat that uses a latitudinal line around Antarctica travels a very short amount of time while, um, you know, they don't travel a huge distance. And if somebody has done um, sort of um, navigation of cargo in the Southern Hemisphere, they, they, they would know that because the, the Southern Hemisphere in um, sort of Nathan's sort of fever dream disc um, is so big compared to, um, the the uh, uh, you know if if it's a if it's a ball or a globe or an oblate spheroid it would come back to be small latitude lines as well and that's what the um, guy's talking about. Yeah, explain why Captain Cook took three years to go sixty thousand miles around Antarctica. Then yeah, because he's in a sailboat, like he uses sails. Oh, and the circumference of yeah. Antarctica is sixty thousand miles on a globe with a radius. No, of but he, he also visited. Really? 
yeah, yeah. He also visited islands and called in on islands as well. So he wasn't doing just a circumnavigation of Antarctica. He was actually doing exploration, which if you're going to islands, staying there um, for sometimes great periods of time, having to go back, restock in the age of sail and wind, um, it takes a much longer time than just somebody transporting cargo in one of a modern ship that is just going around the, the Antarctica. Yep, 60,000 miles in three years to go around a 12,000-mile Antarctica. Cool story, Mark. Makes perfect sense. Well done. Well, he wasn't just, I don't think he listened to what I said. He wasn't just going around Antarctica. He was exploring, so he was going up into the Pacific as well. It, like, he didn't He didn't go, like, you know, in the, in the ice to Antarctica. You know, he was exploring. You do know what exploring means, don't you? Yeah. I know that it wouldn't take three years and you wouldn't have to go 60,000 miles to get around Antarctica, Mark. Cool story, bud. Maybe we can find where he actually went if you want to do that. And uh, I will say, we have gotten our Super Chats in, so I'm going to read the last of these, and then this is going to be, is NASA trustworthy? And I want to continue thanking Mark and Nathan for having fun and all of the people for joining us out there and sending in super chats. And Could listening. I just share, share my screen quickly? Sure can. So this is um, basically his idea, the green one, uh, green trip, is his idea of him exploring around Antarctica. So as we can see here, he's been gone to... Um, over to here, to over to there, down, back up. As you get further up, as we've said, the lines of longitude get longer, not smaller. So as he's gone back up towards the equator, the equator obviously being the longest line of latitude on the planet, um, he's basically taken more time, drops into New Zealand, comes back out, roamed the Pacific, this is, this is his three-year journeys that, that sort of Nathan is trying to say, hey, it wouldn't have taken him that time. And this is him with a tall ship that uses exclusively wind to, to travel. So, yeah, Nathan's just sort of, again, does not really have an idea of uh, what, what he's saying. Thank you so very much. Thank Send you. Love to Abel. I saw you sent $2 in for the love. Send that love right back. And then... Wilson, Destroyer of Worlds for $2. Whose garage is Nathan streaming from? Little Wayne. Twidwazzle for $3. Mark, if it isn't geometric, it has no distance. If it's not geometric, it has no distance. I'm, I'm not, I don't know what he's trying to say. If I the mean, Earth curve you, is not the horizon mark, then that means that you cannot measure the distance to the horizon because it's not physical or geometric. That's what he means. Well, no, we can we can measure a sort of refractive index and and measure that kind of thing. So it is measurable. Um, the the whole idea of a geometric horizon is that it is where the horizon ends, as opposed to what a local horizon I think it's called, where is sort of what you can see to blocked by mountains and things like that. It's all very well understood and we can we can certainly measure it, but you've got to know the refractive index of what you're looking at. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a really weird question, that's all, that, that sort of, you know, Nathan wants to say, hey, if you don't know exactly what this is, how can you measure it? We, we can still measure refraction. I, I don't know why he thinks that we wouldn't. I mean, just because he can't doesn't mean that nobody can't. Tim the question, Pryor. Wasn't, oh, no, the question wasn't even about measuring refraction. It was about the distance to the horizon, you doofus. <laughs> yeah, so this is um, my time, so I'll finish the thing. So name-calling and sort of, you know, insulting people is just shows that he has no argument whatsoever. Um, I've explained how that um, the geometric horizon is where the apparent Earth ends and um, ships have gone over it. He's got nothing except to say hey, I don't understand it and I'm going to call you names because, you know, he's incredibly insecure. Um, so, you know, I, I, I've explained what I know about it. I do note that this isn't about the horizon. It's about whether NASA is trustworthy as much as Nathan wants to make it about his, you know, fever dream flat earth. 
Um, there's, there's no problem with this, nor measuring it, nor our understanding of where the geometric horizon is. It's only because Nathan doesn't understand it that he doesn't believe it. it essentially, essentially, it is an argument from incredulity is what it is. And that's what it boils down to. Yeah, when you say we have two horizons, I don't understand it because it's stupid and doesn't make sense. We only have one horizon, you goofball. Yeah, and then Mark so, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I get the final word. So, yeah, again, Nathan has to rely on insults and condescension. You didn't listen to what I like said. Because okay? What I said was, you claim two horizons. I didn't just call you names. It's not my entire argument. You claim we have two horizons. We don't. We only have one horizon. You need to get your eyes checked, Mark. Yeah, so as I was saying before, the geometric horizon is where we can see to a local horizon is where it's impacted by mountains or towns or whatever. Again, Nathan just likes to yell names because he's got no arguments. He's got nothing going for him. He just, you know, needs to, to act this way. Um, the, the whole idea that there are two horizons may actually be correct because if you've got refraction creating an artificial horizon and the real horizon, the, where the point at which the land ends is a appears to be a different spot um, and we can measure that through through various means um, you may indeed have two horizons one a apparent horizon and one a actual horizon which Nathan knows but he's just using an argument from incredulity to sort of say hey don't believe this because I personally don't believe it that's you don't have all the answers Mark you don't have all the answers um, so I'll finish again. Uh, Amy, if we could stop this, because this is going to go on forever well, if uh, Tinfoil uh, uh, over say, here decides to go just on. Just say a um, one-sentence thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so we've got equations for this. I noticed that Nathan can't even give an equation for anything. So, I mean, he shouts and yells and carries on and calls names, but really he's got nothing to back him up besides his opinion. And on that, $5 super chat from Tim Pryor. Eight inches per square mile was from a flat earther who did not understand things. We did not come up with that. Yeah, well, it's still on the Earth Curve Calculator. So someone needs to contact the globe head that runs the Earth Curve Calculator. I, I debated him in Vegas. He got destroyed. He said he actually sees the curve from 40,000 feet. Uh, yeah, the Metabunk guy. I don't even know his name. The guy's such a loser. Um, so, yeah. I, it's, and Mark claiming I have no formulas. Eight inches per mile squared. There's a formula for you. And it's verified on your website. And you guys will sit there and say I'm wrong. It's on your Earth Curve website. You need to study your own religion and math. Thanks, Amy. And so I saw super chats come in from Majelin and Macaville, and I just want to thank both of you for sending in for the love and support. But we just have a final question for each of our two interlocutors, and then we are heading out. So starting five dollar super chat from upside down guy Mark, do you agree there is no proof the Earth orbits the Sun and that the orbits are just a scientific argument without proof? Hashtag faith without proof. Told you that's what he meant, Mark. You goofball. <laughs> Well, that he should write it in a way that, that is uh, accurate. I can only answer the question that's there. Um, th there is proof that the Earth goes around the sun, absolutely. We have gravitational equations. We have um, um, a, a ton of evidence that the Earth goes around the sun. Name one. Um, it, yeah, Nathan, if you could just control your tantrums you just for name a second. One. That'd be great. Just one, Mark. This debate isn't about... Um, flat Earth. This is about whether we can trust NASA. So um, we have seen um, the Earth going around the sun. There is a lot of evidence for the Earth going around the sun. Um, We're waiting for you to tell us what it is, Mark. Well, I just want to say I see bitter truth as well. Thank you so very much for yeah. all of the love and all of that. Yeah, yeah, I'll just look something oh. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the best thing sure. is like um, parallax shift in stars, right? So we can tell when stars are very slightly moving. And if the stars closer to us are moving more than the stars further away, and we can tell how far the stars are, um, then we are definitely moving in space. So... That is the main reason why they say. Co correlation does not equal causation, Mark. 
So you can say lights in the sky move, and that means we orbit around the sun, but it could just be that the lights in the sky move, Mark. It's rocket surgery. So yeah, correlation isn't causation, Mark. You know that, right? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with rocket surgery. Maybe you can explain that one to me. But um, basically, it's these parallax shifts that we know um, are mean that the Earth is going around the sun. Nathan doesn't have anything to demonstrate this. Well, we've got a lot of evidence and calculations for what, how we should see the stars move from cosmologists. Nathan basically has his able to count on his fingers and toes um, up to about 20, as he said earlier. Um, that's basically what he's coming with. So, yeah, if you want to believe somebody who has never worked in cosmology before, sure, yeah, believe Nathan that, hey, the stars are moving to trick us into thinking that the Earth is going around the sun for some reason. Maybe it's a, a god or something doing it for some weird reason. Who knows? Um, in actual fact, we have the evidence. The, the fact that Nathan has a personal incredulity about the evidence we has, have does not actually mean it is not true. It's just his personal incredulity. That's all. Uh, you're saying stars moving is proof the Earth orbits the sun. Uh, excuse me, Mark. Correlation is not causation. The stars could just be moving. I'm sorry, you're not fucking, you got too thick of a skull to figure that out. You got to take your headphones off. Maybe you can't hear me, but correlation is not causation. It could just be the stars moving. So well done to the person who super chatted. Mark has zero proof the earth orbits the sun. Good yeah. job. Good job. Yes. Bravo, bro. Bravo. Yeah, so if, if you're done with your tantrum, um, the, the, it's the shift of those stars at parallax over the course of six months. Oh, how very nice of you. What, what a guy. Um, because the, there's a large difference to the nearest star, the parallax shift is too small to be seen. To the nearest stars, there is a shift that can be seen. And we know this is the case. And there's other evidence. It's just that Nathan wanted me to find one piece of evidence and that's it. There's other things we correlate with, but Nathan wants to say, hey, I do don't believe it. And that's not an argument. That is an argument from incredulity based upon a man who has no education in the field. I it never said anything. I don't believe it the doesn't... stars move, Mark. I never yeah, said I don't I could believe just it. Talk. They if could, could just easily talk. move Nathan, over a Nathan, flat this earth. isn't your time. This isn't your time. Well, Please, so your tantrum is really, really, I mean, it's just sad, really. We're gonna... You're lying. You're lying, Mark, and that's you're... just sad. You're going to have the final word, and then I think the final question is going to be for Nathan. It may be a back and forth. We'll find out, but it is the final question, and it is for Nathan. But, Mark, the floor is still yours for your final response. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and it is that parallax um, um, movement over six months. They go one way and then the other way that we can tell the movement, and we can also tell the distance to the stars so we know where they're going forward and back. And when you take that as a three-dimensional representation – we're moving closer to this one, away from this one. Then we're moving closer to this one, away from this. Sure, we can tell the, the the trajectory that we're on. Of course we can. Now, Nathan wants to say, hey, they just could be moving. So what would cause stars to move in the exact way um, that, that they would seem to be moving around like this, maybe? I don't know. I don't know what's in you know Nathan's <laughs> weird fever dream mind, but um, I've, I've got no idea. And, and so his argument is essentially, well, I don't believe it, and so neither should you. He's got no, absolutely no scientific evidence. He's got no evidence at all to suggest this isn't the case, just a argument from incredulity and can just be dismissed very easily. I never denied stars move, Mark. You're lying to the whole audience. So. Yeah, so, so Final again, I'll just the last word. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think lying. you might need to mute Nathan because he's got no self-control whatsoever. He's, yeah, thank you. Um, so it's You're not welcome, just Mark. that... It's not just that they move, it is the pattern that they move in and what we can infer from that. And so sort of saying, hey, they move in a certain way, therefore they're just moving that way, it, it doesn't correlate with the rest of the evidence that we have. Um, there, there's no reason to believe that. It's just personal incredulity, and that is all. And on, well... Uh, on that, actually, I'm going to send Nathan. this. If you keep talking, I'll have another last oh. word, mate. Haven't you learned yet? I <laughs> to, enjoy... to, quote, to quote a flurfer, haven't you learned yet? I am enjoying the enthusiasm <laughs> from both of our interlocutors and a final $5 super chat from Tim Woo. Pryor. Okay, I have to stop. Last question. Nathan, please, oh, please tell us what college to go to to research flat earth or was your research 
YouTube. I, I do all my own stunts. So I actually didn't want to be that guy pointing people to YouTube videos. This is why I started a YouTube channel, which eventually got erased prior to the pandemic. So it wasn't me spouting medical misinformation like glow pets who eat too much meat over here will tell you it got bacon come out their neck. But just so you know, guys, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that the Earth should curve in all directions if it's a ball like NASA claims. And you can test it. It doesn't curve in all directions. So don't trust NASA at all. And I think that concludes the debate. In fact, I am sending love indeed to all of our mods, subscribers, and viewers. Because I want to thank you all for joining us here on Modern Day Debate. We are a neutral, nonpartisan platform welcoming everybody from all walks of life. If you're looking for even more fantastic debates, we are now all over the internet, including your favorite podcasting platform. So if you enjoy the show, then please don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe, as well as that bell icon set to all for premieres and reminders to join live streams it helps us to reach an even wider audience including tonight's debate on is nasa trustworthy with our debaters mark reed and nathan thompson here to help us find the answer plus if you like what any of our guests have had to say tonight all of the links are in the description below. Finally, if you're looking for even more fun, feel free to check out our MDD Discord. Also, link in the description below. And with that, I am Amy Newbin with Modern Day Debate. We hope you continue having great conversations, discussions, and debates. Good night, y'all. Happy Sabbath to my fellow believers. Amy, you did a great job moderating. Thank you. Sending love to you and the whole interwebs. Thanks, Amy.